Welcome back to Kind of Funny Star Wars in Review. That's right, we are ranking and reviewing every movie in the Star Wars franchise. If I had just a little more time this morning, I would have edited that intro clip to be the new music from the Episode Nine trailer at the end. Oh, because that shit uh, is fucking wait, 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 baby. Don't spoil it for me. I haven't watched it yet. You haven't seen the no, trailer? I haven't yet. watched it either. Yeah, I know. I saw everyone freaking out about it, and I was like, I'm, I, my plan was to come in this morning and just watch it while everything was quiet, and I totally forgot. Dude, we had to prepare what you gotta do? Stuff. No, Same I things. mean, next time we edit this, should we stop the show right this, now and just watch it? It's gotta be the celebratory music for, uh, from the Gungans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I actually love that shit, dude. I would argue one of the stronger e transitions musically at the end of one of the Star Wars cool, huh? movies. Where it, cool, it, it builds. And the da -da 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 yeah, yeah. So fucking There's cool. a lot of good music in this one. I'm there just is. saying. There this is. is the movie with the best music. Putting it right there. Number one in my book. I, there's an argument to be made. 1,000% for that. <laughs> what, what, what's your argument? What's your argument? Face is great. Everything else is not great. Not true at all. Yeah. So but, many uh, amazing themes. What are the other this. themes? Just all of them. Like all, all of the, ba, ba, the different ba, ba, like. Ba, ba. Da, 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 da. Like the, the, the intro sort of dark theme. So when recognizable. The when you just did. Did. Dude, <laughs> all the great. Naboo troop music yeah, and yeah. stuff. Like when they're in the palace and all that. It's some of the most iconic dog fighting music that they use. That they go on to use in all the rest of the movies. So fucking great. It's rad. But what, hold, here's the thing. We need to watch this trailer. We're going to watch it right now. Yeah, I'm just gonna do it. Yeah, all right, bring all right, it yeah. up, man. Give me a minute. This this is doubling as a as Nick and Andy's or no no Nick and Kevin's live reactions. Oh, Here's yeah. the thing: I've seen it three times. You haven't seen it yet? No. Nah. I cried three times. God. The last Jedi trailers didn't get me. I was like, I was. Now, this is what, this about is what scares me because I'm like, this is how fucked up and how how like post traumatic stress I have with this guy named Series. Because I'm like, Tim cried. Does that mean there's pod racing in this? No. Dude. Does that mean that there's pod racing in this fucking there, there's trailer? There's one moment. If where I see pod racing, changes, I'm gonna drown man. myself in my twenty. You got trendy. a controller? Just uh, crank. yeah. Bear, crank that up to hundred percent. After watching this, this was an eighty-eight out of hundred on the hard nipple. Are we gonna scale. get a super claim for this? We might. We'll clip it out. We should probably not. No, no, no. no. We'll, we'll clip it out. Like take I can, the time. Yeah, I, I can take put the a time, time code and it'll right be now. easy yeah, to yeah, clip yeah. out. Yeah. Right, it's going to be worth Give me a second. And we can even export a clipped out version like now. Live reaction. Just have it ready to upload. All right, give me a second. Here's what we're going to do. Right. Don't, don't show it. Don't show it. Don't show it. I show feel it. like we throw it. Don't and show we'll it. Like we can see it. Don't show it to them. If you guys want to, you you'll see here when we. Uh, it'll be three, we'll two, one. Down, yeah. We'll start playing. You'll see our reactions. Okay, that that'll be the best for claiming. All right. So three. Can they hear it? Wait. Where are they gonna be able to hear it? They'll hear it now. Three, okay. two, one. No, fifty's fine. I need it to be a hundred. <laughs> It's a lot of ships. Perfect.
Nipples are hard. Jesus tears are Christ. flowing down my face Jesus right now. Jesus Christ, man. Jesus. Man, we should probably get tickets for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That would be <laughs> we, nice. We got some tickets. <laughs> Woo! Wow. That's amazing. That, that's that cool. theme in the end is it's awesome. It's going to be... Oh, I'll, put the, really I'll well say done. this right now. Again, Final Menace has the best music ever. This one, <laughs> second best music ever. <laughs> but also, <laughs> but also, prettiest movie you'll ever see. Like, I think oh this will God. be the... Oh like, God, like, yeah. Last yeah. Jedi was gorgeous to look at. This will be equally, if not if better. Like, just visually, holy shit, this the is eye candy. The shot of the TIE fighters going to whatever that iceberg was, God, like, that man, shot was gorgeous. fucking beautiful. Was that, I love, fucking, I love, was that the Super Star Destroyer coming out of the water? Yeah. It was an original Star Destroyer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. the OG original trilogy ones. Like, which the is, Emperor Star Destroyer? And there's, there's so many shots of, like, well, you know, hundreds he of Star Destroyers. And the, right. the shot of the Fla Falcon coming in with all the ships around it. One of the ships in the background. from Rebels. And yeah, like, oh my god, there's a dude. Ton, there's the, it looks like the ship from Battlefront 2. Like, there's just a ton of ships. God, I'm like, I want to rewatch it This is, like, Return of the Jedi on crack, Yeah, it seems like. Let's fucking go. Anyways. Woo! We're not talking about that one. Let's talk about Quite yet. Phantom Menace, baby. Yeah. <laughs> what a transition. <laughs> oh, oh, man. I'm Tim Geddes. This is Andy Cortez. That's Kevin Coelho. We got Nick Scarpino. This is Kind of Funny in review. Every Tuesday, twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games. You can watch live or you can watch later. YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny. Roosterteeth.com. You can listen to this as a podcast on podcast services around the globe. Just search for Kind of Funny Reviews. We are also doing Terminator in review right now. Terminator 1 went up last week. Terminator 2 this week. Dark Fate will be next week, uh, in addition to Attack of the Clones. Very fun stuff for everybody. You can get the show ad-free by going to patreon.com slash kind of funny, just like our Patreon producers did. Al Tribesman. The Predator. Boy. And David Mintel. The Mind Freak. Watch Thank out. you guys very much. Head, Today we're that. talking about <laughs> Star Wars Episode One, The Phantom Menace, Man. released May 19th, 1999, directed by George Lucas. The film was Lucas's first directorial effort after a 22-year hiatus following Star Wars in 1977. In November 2015, Ron Howard confirmed that he, Robert Zemeckis, and Steven Spielberg were approached by Lucas to direct The Phantom Menace. All three approached directors told Lucas that he should direct the film as they each found the project too daunting. Mm -hmm. um, a budget of $115 million, box office of $1.027 billion. Uh, it grossed more than $924 million worldwide during its initial theatrical run, becoming the highest-grossing film of 1999, the second-highest-grossing film worldwide and in North America behind Titanic, and the highest-grossing Star Wars film at the time. A 3D reissue, which earned an additional $102.7 million at the box office, pushed it over the million mark in February 2020, in 2012, uh, a runtime of 2 hours and 13 minutes. That aren't boring at all. And you fucking feel that. Uh, before second. we get into the plot and all that stuff. Can you imagine if Robert this? Zemeckis had directed? I, that would have been the, fucking crazy, That would have been unbelievable. Yeah. But they were that would have been so cool. It would have been cool. Why are they and scared? Like, I've, well, because it, I, I told you, trust one. me, I, they were smart. Yeah. They get it. They were like, if we fuck this up, we are going to be... When, whenever Twitter happens, people are going to tear us apart. <laughs> yeah. on Twitter. But I mean, but, it's not even if they fuck it up. If it's like if the story isn't there, people are immediately blame the director. Do you I think mean, that, look how quick we turned on Lucas? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, do you think that? Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Do you think that Robert Zemeckis was watching like the the reaction to this, and he's like, "Damn it, <sighs> dodge that bullet." Oh, I would have been like, "Fuck, dude, nothing." I mean, like, I should have done it because this, this is the worst that could have yeah, possibly gotten. This <laughs> like he <laughs> fucked this up so bad. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Like it's it's it really is sad too that people after seeing this Lucas didn't pivot and be like let's bring in a different team for Attack of the Clones he just was like Dumb fuck it down. let's just do it again yeah. and then let's just do it again and people were like stop stop it please. and he's like no nah. please Lucas please it's yeah. like when your older brother used to just like punch you like hold you down and punch you in the face and you're just like I can't do anything That's to this never... I don't like it the but punches... you guys don't have older brothers well, yeah. never mind yeah. I, I, I just, oh, I just remember being a there. being a little ten year old kid and old Daddy Cortez pulling me out of. Uh, Coll or college? Yeah, I was in college. <laughs> Pulled me out of elementary that school. Was house, I, was at I was at Palmer Elementary, and he took me out of class, and we went to go see it like that the morning yeah. of, and it was just, as a kid, I watched, th this is probably the Star Wars movie I watched the most, honestly, wow. because it was just like, as a kid, it was on VHS, and I fucking had it finally on VHS, and it, I, it was the pod racing scene, the Darth Maul scene on loop. With my dad's like awesome home speaker system it was so badass. This is undeniably the Star Wars movie I've seen the most. Yeah, for sure. And I think that's just because of our age group. And yeah. in addition to that, it's the movie I experienced the most. Like most, like not just watching it, but playing the video games, Jedi Power Battles, mm. Star Wars Episode One, Rogue Squadron on, on PlayStation. It's like Pod so racer, many yeah. different Pod, Episode One Racer. It's like Episode One permeated 
my life in every single way, which is really crazy. It's Because it's hard to think of the point when it turned. Like, it's, it's hard for me to pinpoint when exactly I was like, oh, this isn't as good as the other ones. Like, I, I feel like when you're a, a little kid, you're just not critical. Of oh, but sure. see, I feel, but the, and, the, and that's that's the travesty of everything is that Lucas didn't make these for 40 year old adults. He made these because he wanted kids to enjoy them. And it worked. You guys enjoyed them. Yeah. And that's cool. They he, And I'm not saying that in a bad way. I'm saying, like, it's it sucks that we give Lucas so much shit for these because we want them to be more serious adult oriented movies that have like. You slightly more, you know, like in more intensity, I, like the original trilogy. He made them for but kids I, with a lot of like political. Yeah, that, that's <laughs> what I'm saying. I can't like, agree with that because it's yeah, like, no, but like, but like so, so but like, he, he wanted to put, to his credit, he wanted to put, infuse more stuff in there that was a little yeah. bit more cartoony and more fun for kids to watch. Like, you know, when you watch, you go back and watch the, the pod racing scene, and I've been super critical of these movies as well, but going back and watching it again, I haven't seen this movie in probably 10 years. I'm like, oh, I get it. If I were a fucking ten year old kid, I would think the announcers were hilarious. I would think Jabba spitting the thing out was great. I would, I would, I would probably have so much fun watching the scene and want a pod oh, racer, incredible. just like when I was a kid, I wanted uh, one of the speeder bikes from from mm-hmm. Indoor. Mm-hmm. So I totally get it, and I totally, um, I understand why he he made the choices he did. Those aren't necessarily the things that I think are the most egregious. They're I not. think a lot of pod the- racing's dope. Straight up, it's dope. I it's, it's a, yeah, it's a lot of the casting. It, it is the over convoluted uh, plot that even after this, now I went through again and I'm like, I got to go back and read a wiki on this because going through and trying to, a, as they're saying it, decipher what the fuck they're talking about. I'm like, what? What is happening? It's like trying to learn plot? about Brexit right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, absolutely. And, and that's the thing that's craziest is in addition to me watching and living episode one the most, I feel like the prequels are also the thing that I've uh, taken in the most kind of like video essays and like thought about mm-hmm. of people like trying to point out what's wrong or like what are they act- what are the themes what are they actually trying to say like what is going on and it's so crazy how when you look at the prequels uh they are the story of palpatine rising but when you look at this even that's convoluted in this one like you see his rise you see some things happening but it's like you get introduced to so many concepts concepts and planets and systems and okay well he's a senator but then there's the supreme counselor and then there's this and this and it's just like and also the 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 thing that the thing that broke my mind where where she was like i'm queen amadala the duly elected uh leader of naboo and i'm like like, i don't think queens get elected and then also was palpatine a senator of naboo yeah I never knew that until the very end of this movie where he was like, you've done great for our people. I was like, did he say our people? Yeah. Is he from Naboo? Yeah. yeah. I, did, I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I knew that because of the games and shit. Like, they double down on that a little but bit. But like, I'm sure there's one line, the throwaway line that I've missed all these years, which is like, Senator Papadine, we must need you because you're a senator from Naboo. But I never got that. <laughs> well, no, but yeah. I mean, they, and that's what I'm saying is like, there is a narrative that goes across the prequels of him rising, and it's pretty cool. It's just buried in so much shit. Yeah. But like, in this, he has the talk with her where he's just like, Hey, the Supreme Counselor, we got to do some shady the, shit. Yeah, the so whole like, point of this movie is so him, for him to get to become Supreme Chancellor. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's him playing chess. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But the way he plays chess is the way like people used to play chess against me, where they understood the game, and I had no fucking idea what was happening <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> He's like, we're going to do this. Vote of no confidence. You're going to do this. Why are they attacking Naboo? I'm not quite sure. What is the trade dispute that's happening? The, I don't really the know. The Trade Federation, is that a separate group from the Republic? I no, don't I, I, think so because, because they're me, under the, they're under like the a legal or something. What? It sounded like a company or like a thing it's that, like a that like regulated yeah, that, that's, trades. That's always but they been follow clear. the rules of the Senate because yeah. they're like this. They're like this is super illegal. But, but what we're also, doing we're going to get in trouble. The rules are ridiculous. Like where it's like, well, we don't have any proof that like this is happening. It's like br- the Queen just came from there. Yeah, we yeah. can't like, have yeah, yeah, that's some China shit. That's some like silence. I'm like, we don't have proof. It's like, yeah, you do. It's like, no, we don't. Well, they 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 tried to set it to the point where where because he was like. And this is my biggest problem with this whole movie is that a lot of the the things that are super important are just told to you by the emperor. Like the emperor really just kind of narrates this whole thing, and then we get some cool action sequences. That's pretty much it, which is like bonkersly opposite from the original trilogy, where yeah. the characters are actually doing stuff to push the narrative forward. Anyway, there was what that one line where he's like, "See, and this is where his power ends because he's a shill for all these other people." But we don't know who those people are, and yeah. we're just kind of we're just told that the Supreme Chancellor, who's well, played by Terrence Stamp, who was awesome as Zod and, and Superman too, is a bad guy. <laughs> and then when they go, there's one line where he's like, "I don't have any confidence in the Chancellor. I call for a vulnerable confidence," and he just sits down and goes, mm. Mm. and then he's gone. He's gone forever. Yeah. We never but see him again. Moments before that, we do see him kind of uh, like 
he knows what's going on. He's talked to her. We've seen an interaction. He with, says, he says, like, hey, we're going to launch an investigation. Yeah. which sounds like bureaucratic bullshit. Like exactly. Bullshit. Where it's like sure. these people need it now. But like, it's just it's so unbelievably com- like convoluted yeah. and shouldn't be. Here's the, and me and Barry were talking about Why this a trade little bit. Fag- uh, like the trade federation like blocking trades. Isn't that what they like? I, I, it was but also, so why does one you have you have a galaxy? Which is you are a galactic trade federation. Why would one planet at all matter in anything that you're doing? Especially a planet that's largely populated by things that live under a sea that probably don't trade with you ever. I mean, I think it had to do with with him being senator and the power that he has within the Senate. No, I de- I know he orchestrated it so that Naboo was there, but I just I've ne- I was never told. I, or rather, maybe I was. I don't know. This, <laughs> Who the fuck I, at a knows? certain point, I I I need to go back and like research what the hell's going on in this, but like. I, I don't know what the significance of Naboo is to the trade. The, like, is it the center of the fucking galaxy for trade? Why would this one planet being blockaded matter at all yeah, like to a galactic senate that them? has literally thousands well, of planets? Is there, like, vib- is there but, a vibranium on there? But, yeah. no, I, <laughs> but I, we're never I told think that's that. Ki- I think that's kind of the point where it's like it doesn't. And that's why it went to investigation instead of them acting on it. You know right, what I but mean? Then, but if it doesn't matter and, that much, why would anyone agree to a vote for... Uh, if, if I were the Supreme Chancellor, I'd be like, this doesn't matter. And if it doesn't matter, why would any of the other senators go along with voting me out as Supreme Chancellor? Like The yeah. stakes of this are zero as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And it's punctuated by the fact that whatever direction Natalie Portman got to be the queen, they were like this. Nat, have you ever done a quaalude? Okay, here's ten. Go into a room right now, and then we're going to record your lines after you've done all of them. That's everybody like, in the da, 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 da. Uh, I'm like, is she drooling again? Oh, get the drool. Get the drool. So a weird drool. thing is, in, in addition to all of this, like, like, why does this make any sense? Why does this matter? Why is Yoda and Mace Windu on that boo at the end of the movie? <laughs> Yeah, I I have so like no, why is the Jedi Council there? Qui Gon Jinn's funeral, funeral, I would imagine, right? Okay, Which they should yeah, have that's put fair, it, yeah. probably taken it back to Jedi yeah. at that point or maybe, wherever the maybe hell. Like, you Jedi, know. isn't that what Jedi. they called her? What was Jedi. what's the name of the planet? Jedi, Jedi, Jedi. Jedi. Is that what it was. But like that's just where they get but like, their like, or wherever, weird. Or yeah, 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 yeah. weird thing of instead of moving a body somewhere else, they move. <laughs> The so like, yeah, Council. I think they were like celebrating also, and like there yeah. was the coming together of the Naboo and the Gungdan. But why sure, the fuck did I'm the sure Jedi was, Council care about that? It was why does what does the Jedi Council do at all? Like well, what? And that's, the a, cost. and that's another problem that I it's a cool concept that's made in this uh, that starts in this movie of like the Jedi Council are kind of idiots and they're kind of Almost the bad guys, in yeah. and that's the what point. They, and and like but that's what they're building. But the movies are so bad at doing. They're so that. bad at telling that. Uh, and that's so. There's two problems I have with this movie as a right. whole that are bigger than anything. One of them is there are so many elements of this that are fucking rad and cool yeah. story wise. The idea of Naboo, the idea of there being two different types of people on this planet that don't necessarily get along but could get along. There's the Trade Federation. There's the Jedi Council. How does this all work together? It could all work together in a really cool way if Zemeckis directed this. Oh, God. Right? Yeah. Zemeckis sat down and he was like, we're, we're dishing half this shit. There could be a very, very cool story involving those elements. It was putting There's together not. a puzzle, but the puzzle pieces were for... We're from three different puzzle sets. It's just yeah. fucking weird. And then the bigger problem I have, though, and me and Barry were talking about this a couple days ago, when it all comes down to it, no future spoilers, no getting into it. What happens in this movie that couldn't have just been in the scroll of the next in movie? In the scroll yeah. of the next movie. What? Not only that, but like the biggest travesty of the entire trilogy is that we don't really get to see Sidious become Sidious until like the very end, right? Isn't he like the very end of like of? Uh, well, no, I mean there's I mean, hints through. of it yeah. in the second. Three, yeah, but it would have been so cool if like they had actually like. Well, I guess we have Dooku and, and Grievous, which are God, characters that probably God. should have been introduced in this one, but they weren't. It's okay. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened. They were like, you know, John Williams walked up to Lucas, was like, "Yeah, I got this song called Duel of the Fates. We need to put it somewhere." <laughs> and they're like, "All right, cool. Well, I got this guy with red paint, and yeah. he's fucking <laughs> rad. It's yeah. really yeah. cool. So have you seen X Men? It's not out yet. What kind of lightsaber does he have? Oh, it's he's got a red one. Oh, cool. Just like the other ones. No, no, no. But there's Two. Both sides. It is. It, yeah. it, it is un. <laughs> you can tell, like literally, if you were to break this down by percentage of how much time Lucas spent on each of these scenes, you could tell he was like, "I'm really looking forward to this this lightsaber battle." At the yeah, end. but dude. So, and I know this is a bit unconventional for how we do these, for how long we're going. But that scene. People don't care. They want to listen. How I, I get that, but uh, uh, that scene, Duel of the Fates, as fucking awesome as it is, why do we cut away from it? A thousand times that's a big... to do the three plane of action thing because they're like, well, it worked in Jedi. And it's like, okay, yeah. but it doesn't work when it cuts between Anakin in the sky. Why? Why did Anakin need to be up there? Because he's a good pilot. Why? 
He, he Every saved single everyone. fucking thing they do with Anakin, he's, I ask he, why. Why Why does he need to be a good builder? Why did they have a line of saying, oh, I can build anything? Oh, so he we can build C-3PO. Th- 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 this right. is my favorite part of the Red but Letter also, media video about this, where they, they're going through and watching the end and like how they're cutting away and all this stuff. And uh, they, they're telling Lucas, of like, this is not a good idea because we're cutting through like three different types of emotions that you're supposed yeah. to be going through and it feels staggering. It gets to four. And, then, and, and yeah, it gets to four and then Lucas decided, nah, I'm just going to keep it because it's inventive and it's like, nah, it wasn't. What my, my other big problem with this is that like, who is the main character of this movie and what is their plot arc? That's a question I have. Is it Anakin? Because Anakin doesn't have a plot arc. He starts... And he's really good at stuff. And then he ends and he literally, like, by happenstance, destroys an entire fuel generator ship that for some reason is tethered to all the droids down there, ending the war. He does not learn anything from start to finish. He is the exact same character at the beginning. Mm, he gets a ponytail. It's true. Little, How does he get the it's ponytail? Braid. His, his, his hair, hair that wasn't that, that fucking long. long. Uh, you have a lot Do of they have a Jedi growth no, for you have enough. You have enough midi chlorians. Oh midi chlorians will grow that shit, dude. Uh, Qui Gon, Master Qui Gon. I heard you talk about metachlorians. I guess I was wondering, what's a metachlorian? I oh, it's they, in the barrel of this gun. Check this out. Oh, my God. I wish are, they had just removed that Are you that an scene. angel? An angel. Oh! God. God damn. But anyway, to, to bring it back uh, to what Andy, uh, what you two were saying, of like, this is the movie you probably watched most as a kid. And it's interesting because I think uh, Duel of the Fates and Pod Racing are definitely the two most watched scenes. I had as a kid, but even like a five, six year old when I was watching this on VHS, I was the target audience, I feel like. Sure. And you definitely even were. even as a child, I was like, no, I want to skip the ninety five percent of this movie to watch these two scenes and that's it. Well and the, and I one of the know, reasons Qui-Gon's so fucking cool. No, I, as he's a, not he's as a, a shitty kid, I, there's so I much think stuff. Qui-Gon's really cool. Not just I as a kid, Qui-Gon. I'm saying like yeah. e- even when I was a kid I was entertained by enough even of Even now, my, like knowing that like he's probably meditating in case he dies, right? Like in that scene. And it's just like that's so cool because yeah, he's no, the one cool, cool, but he's, the, the he's kind thing. of the main character in this movie, and yeah. he learns nothing. Like he does nothing. Like he doesn't grow that, at yeah. all. And that's that. That's that's a big problem with me. Is like there's nothing. There's no progression of real conflict in this that pushes the characters to be different than when they were at the very very beginning. So Obi Wan's kind of like a scared. Like we shouldn't be doing any of this stuff. He literally starts his first line is I have a bad feeling about this, yeah. and at the end he's like. I guess I'll take this kid on because my master wanted me to. I don't want to do this. I didn't learn anything or grow at all to be able to do this. I think this is a bad idea. I wasn't convinced like to like this kid. Yeah, uh, at all. Yeah, Yeah. and And the kid and Anakin should have been this like he should have been a kid who was doubting himself, and because of Qui Gon's like a belief in him, stepped out of his comfort zone and then taken on this big journey. Like Luke was. Luke was like, remember that moment in in New Hope where he's like. He yeah. wants this adventure, but at a, when he's faced with it, when he's given that choice, he goes, I can't do this. I have to go back. I'm just a moisture farmer. And then when he goes, he literally has no more home to go back to. We never got that moment here. We got it. This is not as good. <laughs> Shmi! <laughs> All right. Um, let me let me get some fun little... Uh, wait, no. Come on, baby, you want some facts. <laughs> <laughs> May the facts I'm be with you. Facts, uh, May the facts baby. be with you. Uh, during filming, you and McGregor made lightsaber noises as he dueled. It was noted and corrected during post production. Hilarious. <laughs> I would do. I would like, I can't, guys. This is me. This is, I've been doing this forever. Fucking love him. Uh, during the first week of the first trailer's release, many theaters reported up to 75% of their audiences paying full price for the movie and then walking out after the trailer was shown. <laughs> what a different time. Yeah. <laughs> that's awesome. Um,. I didn't know this. After the film's end credits finish rolling, the sound effect of Darth Vader's breathing can be heard. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Didn't I don't think I ever made it. The second the credits were on this bad boy, I'm turning Done. it off. Yeah. Uh, at the time of the film's release, the producers ran a disinformation campaign to suggest that Natalie Portman played both Padme and the Queen at all times. In fact, they are not always the same person. For many sections of the film, notably those where the Queen is wearing the black outfit with a huge feather headdress, she's actually a decoy played by Kira Knightley. Yeah. The real yeah. Queen, Portman, is actually disguised as a handmaiden. Various conflicting public statements make it extremely difficult to figure out who is who. Whole websites are devoted to figuring out which actor is what? playing which they're not that hard to like, the this, queen at any given point yeah, you yeah, can tell when it's a different Kira voice <laughs> yeah. 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 No, no, the voice is oh, ADR the voice is yeah. <laughs> that's the thing yeah. that's is bad. that that it, it is bad but like even Natalie Portman and Karen Knightley were wrong about what they thought they were like in what interviews scenes about in? scenes they were in interesting what what's <laughs> so sad about this is that you cast Natalie Portman now I know she has better scenes later like she gets to be the queen and Padme later but you cast Natalie Portman who's a phenomenal actress and you don't get to have any 
real character interactions with her until like midway through the film because she's not the queen. Like, you know what I mean? It's just a very weird thing. How much cooler would it have been if she was just the queen? What is the point of having there be that reveal at the end when no one's shocked by it except for like C3 people? I was like, what? Or Jar Jar was like, what? shocking. Yeah. Who's Alyssa? Go back and watch I, that scene again because everyone's like, oh, okay. oh, you mean in in world? I mean in the world, people are like, oh, cool. It wasn't like, holy shit, we're all gonna die and the queen's about to die and then Padme runs up. It's like, no, I'm the queen. I'll sacrifice myself for this. She was just like, no, I gotta talk to the Gungan guy now False because, ass, dude. And everybody there's like, yeah, we know it was you. Yeah, like, we, we just we've been playing along. <laughs> it's embarrassing. Yeah, it's so <laughs> dumb. It was just, oh god. What a poor choice. According to Star Wars canon, Obi-Wan's hanging braid is a Jedi tradition common to all Padawan learners. When his master feels that he has reached proper maturity, he cuts the braid with his lightsaber, signifying that the student is now a full I'd Jedi knight. I'd be like, do scissors, please. Like, I know you're good with that thing. They should have shown that if it's a they, thing. They really should have shown that. Qui-Gon should have fucking cut it off. Really cool, right before the dual face. Hey, hold on. Yeah. All right, you're all good. Get in there, bro. Like, it is, <laughs> for real? It is like, really cool. I think there is an episode of the 2D Clone Wars show where you see Anakin do it. Uh, for his raid, and it's like fucking rad. Anakin does it for himself, or does Obi Wan do it for? I Anakin? don't remember exactly, but I remember of like the the hair coming down. You're like, oh shit, but I forget who exactly does it. Uh, I'm just gonna keep going with the facts because we got some bangers Go for here. It. Hell yeah, Tupac Shakur. Hell yeah. Uh, Star Wars fans since childhood expressed interest in reading for a role, even lobbying mutual friends of his and George Lucas's to get them in touch with each other to set up a meeting so he could read. But his tragic murder in September 1996 prevented any such meeting from taking place. It's been speculated that he was up for the part. The part of Mace Windu, but the character's name was not publicly known before filming started. It was not specifically written for an African American until Samuel L. Jackson was cast. Uh, there's only one shot in the film where there are absolutely no visual effects added at all. The shot of the gas pouring out of the vent in the meeting room. <laughs> That's it? Yeah. <laughs> it's real gas. <laughs> it's, it's really sad because going back and watching the original trilogy and seeing how much pra- stuff they were forced to do practically because they just didn't have the time there, It's it's it allows the actors so much more freedom to be in the scene and act against each other and you feel the energy of that and it's really sad because a lot of the action sequences especially in this beginning like they don't know what they're looking at and they don't know where they're looking and as they're it's it forces the blocking to be so much more boring especially when they're just walking around like they're not it, it's just it sucks I will say it sucked because it kills all the energy out of most of the scenes. It sucked a lot less for me because I watched it on a phone this time and it, it was harder to notice. Yeah, because <laughs> you didn't. know you put that shit on a big screen and it's like it's definitely it. It was noticeable, but it wasn't like offensive or anything like that. Well, the other problem is that the the technology back then just does not hold up, and like yeah, the droids look cartoonish. But yeah. also, let's not let's not try to. I don't want to say that like everybody in the original trilogy were phenomenal actors. Like, oh no, I thought even though they didn't have CG, a lot of there there was a lot of well, bad acting. I yeah, will but say I feel like the original though, trilogy. You're wrong. Everyone in the original trilogy was with a couple the noted of a couple people are phenomenal actors. Some of whom have been nominated for Academy Awards. Yeah. So like Natalie Portman. I mean, go watch The Professional. She and she was like 12 years old when she did that movie. It's a fucking great film. Liam She's Neeson. She's a great fucking Have you seen Samuel. Taken 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5? Samuel L. Jackson. Jackson. Samuel L. Jackson is phenomenal. Like, and he can't Hugh even vote in this fucking Go watch movie. Train Spotting. Like, he's fucking awesome. These these are great actors that they got for this. Yeah, well, no, Terrence actors, Stamp? I'm not acting. I'm not act- Terrence I'm not, Stamp is yeah. phenomenal. I'm not saying... I, I, what, the point I was trying to make is like, I don't... It's not the environments that are making no. It's them the dialogue, b- the environments, the blocking, but also the production design. A director who doesn't know how to direct exactly. acting, yeah. you know, like well, this. A director that has admitted that he doesn't like working with actors, which is the saddest part. Yeah. A director who literally this whole all of these trilogies smack with. I got a new uh, program that I don't know how to use, so I'm just gonna get my friends together and we're gonna shoot some stuff on green screen so I can practice getting the edge perfectly right on their on their head. Oh, and I'll put this other thing in there. Like it's just a tech demo. It's yeah. a th- nine-hour-long tech demo. Uh, the script explains. The script has a lot of really interesting stuff. Uh, you you should definitely like look into like things that episode one script has that you missed because. There's so much like subtext in there that like you just don't get because they didn't do a good job showing it. Uh, the script the script explains that the reason Watto is always flying is that he's crippled. If you look closely, you can see that one foot is longer than the other. He also talks out of the side of his mouth because the broken tusk slurs his words. And when you start looking at the design of him, you're like, okay, cool, that's that's interesting. According to the script, the chance cube that Watto rolled with Qui Gon was fixed to land on red. Yeah, of course. that's why he was so mad that Qui Gon tampered with it to land on blue. That doesn't come across no. at all. <laughs> I, I got for a second. He does say you cheated. Yeah, you like, cheated. L- when because he but like, knew that yeah. it was but it comes off as just he's just kind of like a bitch, not yeah. like there's some shit going on. You yeah, know? that's true. Um, and then the he's last, more of a sore loser. But 
uh, the, the last thing I got here is actually no, I got a couple. Uh, the Starship Enterprise from Star Trek: The Next Generation can be seen briefly amongst the traffic flying around Coruscant. Shut yeah. the fuck up! It's awesome. so cool. Also, there's like ET creatures. In, yeah, in the yeah, Senate. in the Senate. Oh, that's really cool. Um, and then. Greg, how do you say this? Proops? Proops? Greg Proops and Scott Capurro recorded their pod racing commentary in prosthetics and makeup. Why? I don't know. Um, and the very first scene of The Phantom Menace that was filmed featured Darth Sidious and Darth Maul on the balcony when they, when they did that little I chat. I love that scene. It's dope. I love Shout that scene out to Ian McDermott. That scene was in the trailer where he's like, at last we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. Yeah, that was at such a cool trailer revenge. moment. And what's cool about that is like... One of his three lines. <laughs> God bless him. But what's cool about that is I didn't notice this time, but they were both in deep focus, which is really unsettling. So, like, know. yeah, if you look at normally, you know, optically, you'd have whoever's in the foreground. Yeah. If this person's talking in the background. He would be in focus. He wouldn't be. But they comped him in or did something. I don't know, because he was they were attack on Chris. And it's really unnerving to watch. Mm -hmm. But it works. Yeah. It's really cool. Is uh, uh, Was that actually what's his face talking? Ray Parks. Was that actually Ray Parks? Because I, I, I so. never knew he was British. Or yeah. I, I mean, obviously, it could be a fake accent. But I, British. I just always assumed that he was cast because of his athleticism and he, because of his like stunt. You know, flipping and uh, you know, was, cool right? like flips and yeah, shit. But I always assumed that the voice actor was just like a different voice actor comped in. I think it was him. Okay, because he's ha that sounds like his voice. I, mm -hmm. hate, I hate that, and they I'm kill pretty him sure he's British, one. but I could like, be wrong. It would be so cool to get they more. Don't. But all. Uh, it's but also, Future yeah, I mean, they don't, bro, but right. whatever. Sorry, yeah, but like Sorry. they do for the series, you know, he's not on here anymore. It's time for the plot. <laughs> and this movie sucks a lot. Do, do, Please do, do, don't do, do, click do, 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 the dislike do, do, do. button. Please don't it's click our the fault. dislike it's button. It's George Lucas. Like he, made video, like he made this whole movie in post. He made this whole movie in post. Ladies and gentlemen, we get the scroll, the famous scroll. But instead of this time setting up an incredibly exciting thing, we get a lot about taxes in a, fa a trade federation. Turmoil has engulfed the Galactic Republic. The taxation of outlying star systems is in dispute. Which is if you're a line that if you're a 10-year-old kid, you'd be like, Mom, what does that mean? And it's one of those things that if my kid turned to me, I'd be like, I have to pretend like I know what this is talking about. <laughs> Otherwise, I lose ground in this stuff, fight. Son. Bad <laughs> stuff. Nothing more exciting than taxes. The Trade Federation has a bunch of ships that are stopping all shipments or shipping to the small planet of Naboo while the Congress debates the Supreme Chancellor has sent two Jedis in, uh, in secret to settle the conflict. Why in secret? Why in secret, I wonder? <laughs> they are the galactic peacekeepers. They are ambassadors of negotiating. Well, why send them into? Why well, not tell everyone fair, we're sending the Jedi? To be fair, they were going to strong arm the situation. Like we get that. To be that fair, are the, the Jedi nice people? Because Qui Gon pulls a lot of shit in this movie. That's like you're evil, dude. Yeah, maybe don't Cheating. bet everything on this ten year old. You know? Oh God, Christ's sake! Qui Gon Jim and Obi Wan Kenobi. Um, He's gonna do it. He's gonna win. I can feel it. I got to go. Oh my God. Uh, that's a shout out. That's a, fuck it. You guys get it. Qui Gon Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say if you're first time coming in here, but no, this is not the first one. <laughs> it's a callback. It's, it's a callback. Call yeah, you. not a shot. Uh, <laughs> whatever. Qui Gon Jinn and Obi Wan God Kenobi land it. on a Trade Federation ship, and they wear their hoods because being intimidating is super important when on a peaceful, uh, secret mission and a trade dispute. Obi Wan has a bad feeling about this, guys. It's a Star Wars movie. I got a bad. Someone's got to say I got a bad feeling about this. Obi uh, is still an apprentice, and Qui Gon schools him on how to negotiate. Uh, and Ooh, then lightsaber. And, we, and what's I do like some of the back and forth here. Yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah, like, yeah. you got to be in the moment, and you have to like. He's like, you're you're too worried about what's going on. Like, focus on the now. The movie's not bad yet, and he's teaching him about. <laughs> oh yeah. The, their dynamic is great because he's teaching him about how to be like, dude, fucking like basically yeah, yeah, relax. Be cool. Man. Like, be, be cool. Yeah. You're, you're all of, like I love all of this. I I I, I like the back of the, the how they land. I thought it was cool where like the the two pilots are sitting there and they're like mm -hmm. eh, nothing bad could happen to us yeah. in the next five minutes. I love I love the I'm sure we're the, not about to die. We're we're about together, but I love the gassing scene. And as soon as they get up, like it's just uh, I'm I'm watching it on my phone and I love fucking, the droid in the scared. in the Y Y Z airport and I'm just like yeah, dude, this is cool. Uh, <laughs> of course, they're taken to a little room to chill out for a little, little conference room, have a little refreshment mm -hmm. and all that stuff, and then we go to the bridge and we get introduced. To the Viceroy and his uh, right-hand person, Ray. Newt Gunray, and they speak the way they speak. Yes, they do. And they look the way they look, mm -hmm. which is a choice that if I were George Lucas's boss, I'd be like, this is not going to age well. Having said that, we're in 2002. It was a different time back then, evidently. Uh, and they're super pissed off that the Jedis are there. Nobody told them they were coming, and they're like, we don't know what to do with these two super lethal fucking force night killing machines that are down in our thing. Let's call Lord Sidious and he'll tell us what to do. And Lord Sidious is like, you should just go kill them. 
and they're like, ooh, okay, we'll call that option A. Is there an option B that doesn't involve pissing off the fucking the wizards with, with the lightsabers? The laser swords. Yeah, laser sword guys. And they're like, nah, just go kill them. Uh, so they uh, they gas the Jedi. Uh, and but it's but little do they know the Jedi have the Jedi breathing trick, mm-hmm. which is apparently just holding your breath, <sighs> which is also an interesting thing. Which I you know this is science with Kev potentially, yeah. but ten minutes later we see that they have breathing apparatuses. Yeah, in yeah. their pockets. Yeah, in their pockets. Well, that's for water. Yeah, that's for water. It's a bat, uti- yeah, it's a bat utility belt. Well, you know? Science. I don't know. Yeah. It's a bat utility belt. Because yeah, once you go underwater, isn't like the like the pressure and all that stuff like. Sure, but it also there. probably breaks down water and makes into oxygen. Oxygen, yeah, yeah. you can do that with that. They, 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 bought the cheap, they bought the cheaper version. They didn't have the they gas have version. The gas one, yeah. yeah. Uh, they hold their breath as a bunch of really cartoonish droids uh, surround the uh, the exterior of the conference room. And man, Roger, Roger. who needs a sequel to Roger Rabbit when you've got Roger 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 Roger? Roger, Roger. I have a, they're, they're I have a question. The episode nine trailer. Do when they okay not. when they make. These fucking droids with higher authority, do they just paint them a different color and say, you are of a higher authority now? Right. What makes... <laughs> the blues and the reds Yeah, like, different. like I understand uh. I understand that there are different ranks. levels, right? Yeah. Different different ranks. But does a robot, like, outperform somebody? Or do they just say, all right, we're, you're the smarter one who, nah, with better they're, they're, they're they just directing. made a bunch of commander ones. Probably had slightly better connections to, like, the the thing that controls them all. Yeah, the Apple IIc that controls all of them. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. don't know. Uh, either way they get out and they make very very quick very very boring uh work of these droids and they make their way to the bridge and then we get a really cool scene where the bridge he's like close the door and they close the door and Qui-Gon goes I'm gonna do what every kid has always wanted to do with this thing I'm gonna Stick burn a hole through eight feet of steel with this thing and it works I do love how they're reacting inside like this, this is, is fucking going going possible <laughs> <laughs> I told you we should have so things. this is a thing that was the coolest thing possible when I was a little kid and doesn't stand up graphically now but I still love the designs of the, the little the, 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 the droid yeah. the droid and then the little destroyers come out and they like roll roly poly pop shields. up and then they have the shields the and bubble boom, shield boom, boom, boom. the way that it sounds I'm like this is fucking Star Wars yeah. I love it yeah. and yeah. apparently it um, apparently <laughs> J- Jedi's have never trained against things that have shields before because they were like we don't know what to do luckily we uh, we can run at supersonic speed. So they do. They run at super yeah. spontaneous. But only yeah. in this scene and yeah. not at only the end of the movie. in one scene. Uh, they decide to stow... Uh, anyway, uh, they jump down a ventilation shaft and find an invasion force in the hangar. They decide to stow away on separate ships and meet on the planet's surface. Why? I don't know. Uh, you were right about one thing. The negotiations were short. They got on the ventilation <laughs> shaft. Da, 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 da. Ring. Uh, Queen Amidala calls the viceroys and tells them that their trade boycott of the planet has ended. They play dumb... Uh, about the ambassadors, the Jedi's that are supposed to be there, uh, and I don't I really know what's happening except Jesus, the Trade Federation. Well, okay, I don't in one that. of the, in one of the worst <laughs> fucking like FaceTime looking things we ever saw with Natalie Portman talking to them, I'm like, with Star Wars, as far as I'm concerned, to me, invented the idea of holograms yeah. talking to me, right? Yeah. So fucking cool, really so cool. fucking great. That didn't look cool ever. Like, just this weird, like, goopy wall that kind of, well, like, talks to it's you. It's probably because you couldn't get past the fact that she was dressed like a Japanese geisha the entire time for no reason. I mean, the reason was to distract that that's not really a queen. It's for sure. But show. no one else. This is, I was like, no one else is but dressed it, like is that. Is that the reason? I think so. I think that was just, like, no, this I think is what the queen was. Thing. Yeah, I think it's just, yeah. like. Also, it, like, how bitch. old was she supposed to be? 14. Yeah, so maybe it's also to hide her age. Why would anyone? Oh, my problem is not that. My problem is that she's dressed like she's Japanese, and everyone else is dressed like they work at Disneyland. Like no, none of the costumes really make sense with that aesthetic. I'll Queen of on. England always dresses like uh, Umbridge, right? Always got the little pink. Yeah, but everywhere. So everyone around her. No, she doesn't. She actually does. She dress, well, not pink, but she dresses in like that. Like, have yeah. you seen her lately? Yeah, in that God style, but like God it's not her. pink like Umbridge. Yeah. But it would be. Don't you think it'd be weird if like you go to London, you go to the palace, it's right? some red and queen you see the shit, palace right? guards that are dressed like little pomp and the pants and stuff like that, and then you go in and, the and she is dressed like a fucking samurai, like a Gundam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She's just dressed like a like yeah. a me- like Mecha Godzilla. Uh, down on Naboo, uh, uh, Palpatine calls Amidala and plays dumb of He's like, a Jedi should get there. I don't know where they went. Uh, and then a bad signal uh, cuts off. And I guess that can only mean one thing. Uh, invasion. Mm-hmm. The governor's like, that, a bad signal means invasion. Or he's <laughs> going through a tunnel in Malibu. <laughs> we don't really know. Uh, Amidala wants to hold out for the negotiations because everyone is distracted by her appearance. Uh, oh, that's, that was just me. Sorry. You can get... <laughs> You got something on your lip, just right here. That's what I wrote in there. Uh, it's <laughs> great joke. <laughs> I love that it got him before it even came yeah. out. God damn me. Uh, 
I will not condone a course of action that will lead us to war, is what she said. She wants to negotiate. Too late! The trade forces land on the planet and start cutting down trees and shit, and Qui-Gon saves Jar Jar, and the world is worse off for it. Oh, Mui Mui, I love you! Useless fucking character. Oh, it's, Mui Mui! I hate him so much. I mean, it, and honestly, it's it, Jar, the existence of Jar Jar is the one thing that really... This makes movie. me hold credence to the fact that nobody can argue that this is a good movie. No. Yeah. Like, and that's unfortunate. Like that there's no matter how many cool elements are there, there's not even an argument that this is good. It's I, not like good I feel I just this. again, I feel bad for the actor. He went through a lot of shit and he went through a lot Sucks. of like depression. But like wa- like watching the movie again, and I hadn't seen it in a long time, I'm kind of hoping Oh, maybe this time, it, you know, it's, uh, no, maybe it's it'll just, click it's, this time. It's always really, it really know. not good. I mean, it's not the actor's fault, and he's not like super, like he's not recognizable. You know what I mean? Sure. Like to the except for the people that like want to be dicks and like yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's just like bad. the Star yeah. Wars fandom who know like who that actor is. Yeah, they, like, yeah, yeah. Drove him Again, it's like bad. it's like it's when they give the uh, what's her name Kelly. Uh, the girl that played Rose Tika yeah. shit. Don't yeah, give the actor shit. Yeah. They're just doing what they're told to do. They took a role in a cool series that they love. Fuck off. Mm-hmm. Don't give him shit. George Lucas. Give him shit. He's the one that so sat down and was like, oh, moi, moi. I love to say that. like, George. And then, like, a second like, what was that, George? What was that, George? And he just hears this, oh, moi, moi. <laughs> and then, and then, oh, it's Christ. crazy to see, like, documentaries um, from this, the prequels and, like, seeing the fandom, like, get all excited for, like, the, what came out. And, like, pe- like, people got tattoos. Of Anakin and Jar Jar, and then it like came out, and it was like, mm, was that a bad decision? Yeah, man, I was decision. I was stoked, dude. Like leading up, I, I, I would decision. always I was buying like every I was having my parents buy rather every one of like the twelve packs of sodas that had like the cans, all the cool yeah, cans on them or whatever. Rad. And I I collected all the cans and of course all the cool toys at all the different stores. But uh, more importantly, I remember seeing on one of the the uh, promotional images. That C three PO had like no gold plating, so I for some reason I thought this movie took place in the future. I just ne- it never occurred to me this is a prequel, even though like it was someone, called episode like someone one. Stole his gold from him. So I always thought that like, oh, this is like his Something new happened. the new iteration of him or yeah. whatever. It was just it was such a, He's a mystery lightweight to me. now. Yeah, it was such a mystery to me. Uh, Qui Gon calls uh, Jar Jar brainless, but then is like, you know, what? you could just hang out with us for the rest of this thing because you're a fucking brainless idiot. Why? But you know, I don't know why. I don't know. Well, no, isn't, because isn't he needs him to go to the, the he's like no no, no but before that. After that. No, no, but before Why? that, uh, it was Qui Gon sh- saved his life, so he was like, "I'm it indebted to you." I like that. And also, I like, cool, you kept me alive yourself. here. You can keep me alive longer. I think that's what that was. And then afterwards, because it was a little bit after that, where he was like, "We can always go to Gungan City." That's true. And then, uh, also, uh, and then, well, sorry, last thing. When they get to Gungan City, they're like, "Oh, we're gonna punish him. They're gonna fucking k- kill him." They should yeah. kill him. Yeah, I think when they're when they're underneath that. when they're talking to Jar Jar <laughs> underneath all the trees and everything, I believe that. This is a shot where they probably did reshoots because Obi Wan looks like he maybe put up like maybe five pounds, like not a little bit. He looks a little bit like uh, a little thicker, thicker. But it it looks like he has a, a wig on. His probably. hair looks like not the same as it does the rest of the movie. And there's several scenes like that where maybe it was CG. It looks terror. It looks really, really bad. Yeah. This is one of those movies where like me. you know that you know the old saying like we'll fix it in post. This is one of those movies where like we'll just make it in post. We'll yeah. just whatever the hell we need. We'll just we'll just CG it. Uh, Oh, Obi Wan catches up to him. So it's super smart that they had that throwaway line where they were like, "We're going to take separate ships." Why? Why? Did we? Uh, Would have been so cool if they took the same ship and we got a great scene with More them like, going like, "Oh God, best we have to land on one this of the planet. best things that this movie has." Di- is dialogue, dialogue between Qui Gon and Obi Wan. Yeah, no. uh, Obi Wan catches up with them and they blast some droids and then bounce. Excuse me, but most of the safest place is Gunga City. And Jar Jar is, uh, but he's been banished, so I guess we can't go back there. Well, he's then why would you say it, you fucking moron? Uh, but Qui Gon doesn't care. He says, "If those Trade Federation forces find us, we're dead." So let's bounce. Okay, cool. Uh, and then they go into the water. And then what's hilarious is that they're like, "There's a line later where the Trade Federation's like, we can't find this other city that's underneath the water." Well, apparently they never just poked their head under because, like, within four feet we see Gunga. No, they it's do find it later. And remember, because when they go easy. back to yeah. them, they're like, "Oh, it's deserted." Where would they go? Idiot. Oh, there's this other place. I'll tell you it's what, like, as a kid who never knew how to swim, like everybody wanted a lightsaber as a kid, I wanted the breathing the apparatus. The breathing apparatus. Oh, that's, that's the coolest cool. thing in the I world. I just remember dude. that. I saw that. I was like, they stole that shit from Batman. Because Batman used to have that thing in his utility belt. He put it in and he used to dive under. And, like, and then so I love cool. the concept of like this, uh, this, these walls made of like some sort of liquid whatever. Cool. And yeah. Yeah. Really, like, kinda, Which makes the total sense. The sound design in this movie is fucking what does phenomenal. It, what it, does makes, it? <laughs> it makes total sense that these people live under the water in a fully oxygenated environment. <laughs> Why? 
<laughs> they're sea so people. It's, come on, it's cool. Because they're frogs. But they could live on... Why do you have... Okay, whatever. What doesn't make any sense to me is, like, why they're weapon. Because, like, they're sticks and then energy, like, EMP balls. balls yeah. Where it's like, before this, you didn't have electrical, like, enemies. Like, the droids are a new threat. They literally just yeah. landed on the planet. Also, you live in water. Why is, yeah. So it seems silly the to have electrical energy. in water. seems like a water. bad thing to throw at someone. They live, they live in water under the sea in air bubbles with electricity all around them. You That's this movie. Well, the air jump. bubbles, I mean, you have to the be air bubbles are cool. you can't, It's hard to move around in water. You can't fucking. They're frogs. You ever try to have They're sex like in water? People. Yeah, difficult. but like, it's still just annoying to, yeah. like, hey, man, maneuver. You ever seen Jason Momoa swim? I rest my case. Wow. Back to it. Uh, wow. The Gungans don't care. Uh, they just, uh, Let's see. Uh, they're brought into the Gungans who hate the Naboo because they know how to speak properly, apparently, without sounding like dumb shits. Uh, the Gungans don't care. They decide to help the Jedi anyway by giving them a bongo, which will take them through the planet's core. Uh, and the CG looks so bad here it hurts. This is this is one of those sequences where like this is, this is what we constantly get in this movie. Now, <laughs> normally... Normally you get so scenes bad. where, you know, like good screenwriting, at least from what I understand, the scene starts and then there's like a conflict point and then it ends, but it ends on a different emotional note than when it starts. Every scene in this movie, they go, Tim, I want you to do something for me. And you go, I don't want to do that. And then I go, are you sure? And they go, okay. Yeah. It, that That's literally happens about four times. fucking scene. That, uh, anytime they're like, and at no point do the Jedi have to do something cool to overcome this, com this thing. They just kind of talk Mind their way through it. it. And but, then, but it's like, but they don't do that though. It's like it happens time and time again. Right. Like, uh, hey, we're gonna go to Tatooine. Um, you used to hear Padme's like, no, I want to come with you. All right, fine, cool, cool. Oh, hey, uh, we're gonna take Anakin, Shmi. Is that cool? Nah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. It's Are you sure? What is it, going on? And it's not even like they didn't even wait. There's. Just, it's in the same scene. Yeah. Like normally, yeah. if you have that, <laughs> the, the scene would end. And be like you're not taking my son with you, mm -hmm. and then something else would happen to make her realize that he should go with him. Yeah. And that thing usually is is dictated by one of the other characters, but we don't necessarily get it. anyway. Also, real, real that, quick, I mean real that <sighs> that thing bothers you guys, but for me, it's like. Why, the the Zoras from Zelda and the Gungans from here are the same because why why does their leader look like a different species? I don't. I have no why idea. Do, like why, that's a great. Why point. does he there's look, always a bigger fish? Why does he look different? I don't oh my get God. it. I'm, that's a perfect example. We're getting that right. Great. Wait, 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 real quick, so, uh, Tyler uh, Newgroove in the chat says when they fought the nu Nubians, is that what, the right way to say the it? Nubians? Nub Nubians. There you go. Uh, <laughs> they would EMP their guns and shit, like I, as a response to like. Why they had those orb things? When mm -hmm. did they do that? So no, no, but just the when idea of them having to come within throwing range hmm. of someone no, with no, a no, they gun. Have, they have the, you know the little I mean? javelin thing. A, but B, that is not in this movie. Yeah, and we never see that, so it's never explained. <laughs> I, why I'm they just have saying. Those no, like, but I like, buy that though. I buy like, it. The, sure. There's two places, two groups on a planet the that don't like each other. Thing. Uh, Qui -Gon. Develop a gun. You see someone else have it. Qui Gon decides to save Jar Jar by pulling the old life debt stuff, and we go on. Uh, except Jar Jar doesn't want to go at first because he's like, "Oh, I'd rather stay here and then go to the core." And then he's like, "Oh wait, they're gonna kill me, so I'll go again." Oh, oh shit, wait, they're gonna kill me. I go. No one even said that to him. He just had that moment himself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they go. Uh, let's see. Jar Jar was banished because he was clumsy, and you're like, "Oh, that's cool. Maybe he'll make up for that later by not being clumsy at a very pivotal moment and save stuff, or, or he'll just be clumsy again." Yeah, and, and we're gonna reward shit. him. This guy he's falls. The, he's gonna go from general, and he yeah, ends general in this movie yeah. to the senator. Yeah, ah! Palpatine's Palpatine spot. Yeah, right. They, yeah, that's Palpatine's spot. <laughs> uh, they go into the ocean in the bongo, uh, whatever, and a big. Yeah. Goober fish, Whatever. Uh, and they're chased by a big goober fish, and then goober this fish. is a, this is the best part of this whole movie. They uh, Qui Gon looks at it looks looks at Obi Wan. Obi Wan looks at Qui Gon. And he goes, "We have to use our Jedi training right now, and it's a great moment for Obi Wan's character to really grow because he's not a master yet. So instead of like him taking care of it himself, he goes, Obi, you got to go out there, you got to face this fish. No, that actually doesn't happen. I'm sorry, a bigger fish just eats that fish. Yeah, and that's cool. That's all we get. And then yeah. we get another bigger fish." And then Obi kind of like does a twirl, and that fish bites its own tail or whatever, and when, then they get off. When, when, the, when the first big fish thing happens, I'm like, wow, I remember this scene being a lot longer. And then it was, because there was just another <laughs> additional fish that's like, why did you do the same kind of cool thing twice? there's always a bigger fish, Andy. But I'll tell you what, this really, really kind of like ramped up my fascination uh, with a sea giant sea yeah. life. You mean like, horror, right? I mean, it's cool. Of, like, what's yeah, underneath I'm scared, there? but it's awesome. I thought you were going to talk about the scene where they knock out Jar Jar Binks, and it was like, thank fucking God. Oh, no. I, it's I, like, I just, oh, too much. It's Steven like, no, Seagal no, no, break his neck. Yeah. <laughs> me, me being a dumbass kid, like I, at this point, I, I think I was probably eight when I first saw the trailer for episode one in theaters and there's a scene of all the Gungans walking in the like fog in the swamp 
And it horrifies me. Looks like the scene from Bugs Life. I remember having to psych myself up. I'm like, I've seen all the Star Wars movies a million times. I don't know if I can handle this one. Like, you know that feeling when you're like in line for a roller coaster and you're roller coaster and you're like, I'm gonna do this, but I'm scared. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, It always reminded me of the the Bugs Life scene where the where Hopper and the crickets are like walking through the mist. I was maybe that's a really cool scene. Mm -hmm. Maybe Uh, the droid. Meanwhile, the droid army captures the queen. Ah, victory! Uh, Qui Gon and Obi Wan get off the submarine right at Disneyland and head for the royal palace. While the viceroy says he's gonna sign a treaty with the queen, which will be legitimized through the Senate. Even though this whole thing was super illegal from the get go, and nobody knows what's happening at all. Uh, If her highness does not cooperate, the suffering of her people will change her mind. Amidala and her guards are taken to the camp four for processing, but before they can get there, Obi Wan does the splits and takes out a couple droids. <laughs> and then the action is so bad they literally use cutaways, and the droids are just getting sliced by lightsabers. Dude, so much of they the action to in this, this movie is just Qui Gon and Obi Wan just going like this, and then in post them adding lasers to hit yeah, those things. It's and so off. fucking dumb. Man, how like I mean, these droids are like Damn. we always make fun Useless. of how bad the aiming that the stormtroopers have, but like when when. Obi Wan has come at you with a clearly telegraph. <laughs> it's like it's the slowest move, and they don't they just wait there. <laughs> uh, it's bad. Uh, it's such a slow wind up, man. They say also they th- kind of react like. Uh, as they're getting sliced, I always thought that was the weird. Robots. Yeah, <laughs> the robot. Like. Uh, they save the queen and grab uh, her her group, and they head to the hangar, and they talk to the queen to come in with them to Coruscant, uh, where they can plead their case to the Senate. Then they casually walk to a group of pilots being held hostage by the droids, and Obi-Wan does the splits again, and then they beat the droids pretty much with ease. It was weird that he did the splits back Twice. to back that quick. Too many times. Splits. Yeah. Like, it's it's times. almost as if George was like, wait, you can do the splits? And he was like, do it again. how can I make him do the splits all the time in post? <laughs> the amount yeah. of times that you have of those, split it. Yes. Yeah, that would be uh, good. That'd at be this good. point, so this is... Real, real quick, I want to... In defense of the battle droids, I like that they're kind of stupid and just they, they go down easily because the idea for them is that they're it's quantity, not quality. And it's like they address that later with like, it being humans well, and we need humans yeah, to I be an like army and whatever. F- for a while, like just a force push is enough to get rid of them, really. Yeah. This scene is, is a perfect example of why these were a terrible choice. Why, I, I understand why he made them because he was like, we, I want to see lightsabers. Like, this is the first time we're really going to see Jedis do crazy shit with lightsabers. So they got to slice stuff, and those things can't be that many humans mm-hmm. uh, until the next one well, where we just slice a bunch of humans. I don't um, know if you noticed it or not, but when we watched the uh, Rise of the Skywalker trailer, there's a battle droid head in the back. Is there really? Yeah. Great. <laughs> we'll see what JJ does with those. But this is a perfect scene, right? Where, like, the scene has no tension whatsoever. And they go up and they just house these fucking things. And then someone goes, Whoa, move, we gotta go. And then they, like, kind of run onto the ship. And I'm like, Why? There's two more droids left. You don't need to move. There's nothing. It's not like, like, in the original trilogy, a door would have opened and 400 star, like, stormtroopers would have run out. In this one, there's one droid that's like, Don't, I don't, I'm good, man. I'm just going to fucking second <laughs> ladder. Right? I'm done. I'm done with this. I quit. Ah, anyway. Uh, let's see. Uh, somebody else moved. Yada yada. Oh, then they go up to space, and there's a blockade up there. Oh, that's great. Uh, but the shield generator gets hit, so they send three droids, including R two D two, up there to fix it, and he gets the job done. The droid's a hero, but there's not enough power to go to uh, Coruscant, so they need to land at the closest planet possible, which is Tatooine, to refuel. But Tatooine is run by the Huts, uh, who is uh, Jabba, Ginny, and Anthony Hut from Jersey Shores. <laughs> <laughs> I just like that the Dude. Huts run this the whole thing. The Huts. But also, why does everybody speak Hutessi? Why it's, wasn't it's Jabba, so the Hutt, Jabba the Hutt was just this cool gangster that lived on this planet? Why does he suddenly have an extended family that he like worries about going to Christmas with? Yeah, you know what I mean. <laughs> He's like, oh, I got anxiety again because the holidays shows, going around. I don't man. know if I'm going to go to Gina's family or Anthony's family. They needed Jesus, to extend man. that shit as much. And as possible. Gina's like a big Trump fan. I'm just like, fuck, oh, I my can't God. do it. Well, Gina's R2, mom's a big Trump fan. R two man. Why? That's a bad sound out there. But I, why are two? Like, don't. why? It, do you need to be here? Why do you need to be part of this at all? Honestly, to introduce it's, him. Like, it's, to, to give us what's familiar, right? But I'm. But that's it's the fan problem, service. though. It's like, oh, absolutely. We're about it's to go to service. Tatooine. Like, we, we're getting something familiar. We're getting enough. Mm-hmm. We don't need this. We don't need him to have a hero moment. But I will say that this is the first moment in my life that people cheered in a movie theater. And I was like, oh shit, hell yeah. I mean, like, at the time. <laughs> to be fair, it's a really cool moment. It's like fan service little... bullshit. It's like, it doesn't service the movie, it services yeah. the, sure. the clapping moment. But, like, can you guys remember a moment in a movie, in a theater, where people were clapping before the end of the movie? No. Before mm-hmm. that? No. I, I don't remember my before early that? Yes. Or like there now? are multiple moments before where that's that. happened, okay. but I can't remember. It was when right Attack of the Clones ended. Everyone was like, fucking thank God, Jesus Christ. That's when I like, <laughs> finished it. would be after that, right? After that happens, let's see. Oh, here we go. 
Uh, the Viceroy calls Sidious to tell them that they lost the Queen, so Sidious introduces them to his apprentice, Darth Maul, and goes, you know what, he'll find them. And the Viceroy is like, <laughs> they end the call, and the Viceroy is like, we shouldn't have made this deal. <laughs> this <laughs> is so bad thing. Fucked. And it's like, why would you end it? That oh, God. Uh, down in the Queen's ship, they commend R2-D2 for just doing his job, which is a completely useless and totally yeah. fan service scene. This droid should be commended. Have what's you ever what, commended no, a none droid? Of the, Can we none get, of the other droids name? ran away. You know, it's not like one of the other droids was like, fuck this. But also, went back into the thing. They got blown up. It's in this world, it's like it's like commending your iPhone for doing its job, for calling your friend. Hey, good job, man. You really got me out of my, my I had a flat tire. Thanks, iPhone. Little fucking you make a little medallion that goes around it. We have the cool music at the I end. I tell my Google oh, thank God. you every once in a while. I say please because when the machines take over, I want <laughs> yeah. them to remember me. <laughs> I ask for the weather and it tells me, and I'm like, thank you. And it's like, you're welcome. I'm like, huh. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The queen orders Padme to clean up the droid as best as she can. And Qui-Gon tells them that they're going to Tatooine. But Captain Panaka, uh, who you have to assume has been one of the queen's generals for a solid 10 years, is like, I don't agree with this plan. But instead of having there be conflict, Qui-Gon goes, you just got to trust my judgment. And then He's the like, scene well, ends. I'm magical, bro. Sword. I love the and there's no further, com- like, no further discussion. I love the idea, though, of like, Fake Amidala being like, clean up this joy to real Amidala be like, bitch, come on, like, what are you doing? <laughs> she, as, like, the, as she leaves, she's like, I'm gonna get you. I'm fucking, get you all right, you. hold your fucking. I, I, have, roll. I have a feeling she was like, I want to clean this droid myself. You're gonna tell me to clean this droid because this droid just saved our lives and he's a hero. No, you're lying. Oh no, my God. That's and I'm also one. gonna put my I'm, my kid's gonna put a message in this droid later, but no one's gonna remember it. <laughs> Oh my god, uh, dude. It doesn't matter. Uh, they land on Tatooine, and they need a hyperdrive generator. So Qui-Gon and Jar Jar head off with Padme, because that makes sense, too. Uh, Padme is like, the queen wants to keep an eye on you. So it's like, but why? Okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, they head into town, and we see moisture farms, just like Uncle Owens, and Jar Jar steps in poo-poo. Oh, duty, duty, poochie. Oh, boy, boy, poi, poi. Jar Jar talks the way you talk when you're in the toilet. Oh my god, it's true! It's so true! <laughs> it's true. Uh, Jesus. I'm a Pucci! I'm my, my, Kevin! Now we know where you got him! Wait, wait, Pucci! Oh my god. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's, uh, they try one of the small dealers and we finally meet Watto. And we Anakin. finally meet Watto. I'll say this. Please do. I was like, oh god, this is gonna be hilarious. We're gonna meet Watto. Watto's actually. One of the more fun characters that they interact with. I love what he's like. Yeah. Because, and here's why. I, I figured it out this time around. He's the only character that says no to them. Mm. And that scene is not immediately resolved in that scene. Mm-hmm. He goes, fuck you, no. And they go, cool, we got to figure something else out. And then they go back to him. They have to they have to use something to overcome that that conflict. He's still a problematic character as well. I love though. him, though. I mean, yeah. Like, there's a lot of racism. Mostly, there's a lot of racism. There's a lot, of, there's a lot of really him. bad stuff. But I was... Uh, well, every, <laughs> let's put it, like, I, I was at the airport, and nope, I had the nope. phone. I had the movie up on my phone, and I was like, Nick, can you watch my bags? I want to go get something to, to eat real quick. And I'm walking. And as I'm, like, getting stuff, I have the movie paused, but I accidentally, like, tapped the fast-forward button, and it played. So I wasn't really... Like, I accidentally tapped somewhere in the future in the movie, and... And I have my Bluetooth headphones on, and all I hear is, <laughs> and I was like, oh, fucking Watto's on the screen. It was <laughs> apparently, it was a deleted scene where Watto was taking a shit. It was just like in the middle of one of like, there's a moment of silence, but all I hear is, <laughs> <laughs> it was so fucking funny to me, man. Oh, man. Uh, so they go in, uh, we meet Watto and Anakin, uh, we, and Anakin asks Padme if she's an angel from the moons of Yego, because, and then Padme's like, I don't know what it is about this small child, but I I'm in love. Jesus. I love the idea of that though. I just I, I love little peppering in little tiny moments of like these are f- kind of fairy tales that they tell in this world, and the moon to Viego just sounds awesome. Yeah. It's just like a cool you're right. Thing. That does everything about oh, the scene horrible. though. Stupid. It's so fucking bad. bad. And in the same way that Obi Wan loves doing the splits, why does this kid love saying yippee? I don't yippee! fucking know. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, uh, Anakin apparently is a pilot. He's like, I'm a great pilot, and I can make a lot of good stuff. Why? How, how are you a pilot? Because you know why? Because there was one line of saying like, well, my dad was a he was a great pilot. Yeah, he was, but he was also and, this. And you, you've been alive to the master builder. You've been like, alive for three years. How do you know you're a great? But pilot? I, not only that, but he's a slave. 
Now, I know they have the throwaway line later where they have small explosives in there, like the running man. Which I don't believe at all. I don't believe that. We don't get a scene where they take it out, you know what I mean? Yeah, we never get a scene where they take it out. And B, he's this unbelievably smart electrical engineer and he can't find a fucking explosive device in him and his mom. And he's a pilot. So I'd be like this. Hey, kid, instead of pod racing, why don't you spend that time freeing your mom and you and flying you the fuck off this dirt hellhole? I love the idea, though. Like, I I wish they would (laughs) have not had the We never see him fly before this. And he just goes, I'm a great pilot. Racing. Pod well, yeah, racing he's not flying. I wish they would have never. As we know, because when he gets in a fucking plane later, he goes, "Oh, where's the trigger? I wonder what this button does. What is this oh, one no, does? That wasn't start. it. Does this? Oh, oh this? shit! Oh, I found the trigger Yippee. on the fucking joystick where it always is in every fucking plane. Oh, you know why they put it there? Because it's called a trigger. You ever play Ace Commander? Um, I love. I, I again, I don't <laughs> love the idea that they introduce that line that I'm a great pilot, but I really, really <laughs> think it's cool when he's sitting there at the table and he's like, uh. I, I do pod races. I'm the only human who can do it. Yeah. That's, that's cool. so that's cool, cool to me. But see, that would have been fine if that's the only thing we get from this kid. Yes. If, it, if it's just, a, oh, this kid's a little weird, and then he sits down and goes, I love pod racing, and then someone goes, he's the only person that, he's like, no other, like, not I'm the only person that can do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I'm the only it's human. Some, someone sh- else should have been like, they should have had his little pod friend racing, there. No, you're a human though. You're you're, you're like a Terran yeah. or whatever they call him. Like no other human could do that. And then Qui Gon goes, "Oh, this kid's something special." Instead, this kid's like that. This kid's trying to get into Harvard. I'm good at I'm great at this. I'm great at this. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about me. It's all exposition, exposition, exposition. Oh God. What about your and time? Think, what about your timetables, bitch? You know, like yeah. Well, how do you, how do you do with your divi- uh, long multiplication? Uh, oh, you're you good know? at piloting. Your how about freeing like? your fucking mom? Yeah. You good at that? You good at that? Huh? All right. Uh, God, people are going to hate us for this one. Anakin's, uh, and then she's are like, they? "Oh, you're." They can't because my intro song, which you sung over, had lyrics in there to like ask for not to hate the video, but they couldn't hear it. They're gonna hate it. Uh, and then she goes, "Oh, you're a slave." Anakin goes, "I'm not a slave. I'm a person." But like, and you're it's also like, my a slave. name is Anakin. And he's just, but it's like, why does this character have everything he needs for life? He's the main character of the next trilogy. Like, why? If she called him a slave, he should have been like, "You're right. I'm a slave." Like, he should have felt no self worth until. The force gave him self worth until him trying to break away from the fucking literal and, and figurative binds of the slavery give him a reason to fucking be better. But no, he's like, I'm not a slave, I'm a person. Cool. All right, man. Cool. And a pilot. Uh, I guess you're and an engineer. And, a and I can bang whatever queen I want. Any queen. <laughs> I'm banging. <laughs> I'm going to bang her and the handmaiden. They call, you know how they call Jamie Lannister the Kingslayer? I'm the queen banger. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Anakin right. Skywalker, the queen, queen banger. Here's a, a big problem that starts in this scene, because this is the scene Anakin is introduced. I don't think there's a line of dialogue directed towards him that doesn't start with Anakin. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Or Annie. Every single fucking line of dialogue to him, they have to say his name. Every single one. Well, also, they call the guy's terrible. All it's right. just uh, so weird. That's not how people talk. No. Ever. Uh, outside, Qui-Gon tries to use a Jedi mind trick on Watto, but he's not fucking, he's not having it. He's like, Why? he's like, I'm not. He's like, what are you, a Je- you think you're a Jedi or something? Yeah, Holy he does. He I, I, yeah. I do like that, though, because it, like. Uh, I like that scene. It, it harkens back to uh, Jabba, Jabba in, in Re- uh, Return. Mm-hmm. Cool. They're not the same species. No, but it's, 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 it's not, it's not a species, yeah. but weak-mindedness. It's, yeah. And I get that. And I like the scene because but it's, like, again, r- one of the rare instances where Qui-Gon just wants to do something and he meets some level of adversity that says, you can't do this. But I do feel like it wasn't about weak minds. It I, is. He I says, a race. I'm, I'm a, a toy yeah, darian. I'm a toy darian. I'm a toy darian. I won't be fooled by mind tricks. Ugh. So it, like in this one, they're like unnecessarily like, oh, I guess. This, yeah, but that's, that's like me saying, like, like, I'm, I'm an Italian. I'm not going to nah. get a bad deal on this. And Look, then they get a bad deal anyway. This is because this is Harry Potter. Forget what you know, dude. Like how much did that series ever throw at you? Like, yeah, but the bloopy doobies have the the flarknarks. But like, I think, oh, okay, oh, we yeah. can't do that. Oh, right. But I think Kevin's point is very, very point is, is that it was it didn't used to be about species. It used yeah. to be about like, hey, if you were a dumbass, it works on you. But if if you're smart, like you would, the person who's like running a junk thing and has slaves and is like rising, and then it would. Well, work on I you. mean, this is just uh, this is a totally it's needless. It's this needless is, exposition. This is, is totally the same as uh, you know adding lines just so we can be not. Blind. This is adding a scientific thing to midi chlorians. Like they are they. They are, Unnecessarily they are scientificating like it or what the, whatever the word <laughs> no, is. Like they're, trying to, to later. They're, yeah. ma- they're trying to make it rooted in like a, a, an actual something you could read about in a biology yeah. book. So they leave. Uh, Watto tells Anakin to clean the racks and then he can go home for the day and Anakin goes, yippee! Outside, Jar Jar tries to eat a frog but uh, that he can't pay for and he pisses off Sepulba. Sepulba? Sepulba. 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 Uh, but Anakin saves him. Me chasin no pasa, Slimo. Uy, tu chipate, tu now, uh, this is yet another instance where if Jar Jar had gotten them in trouble, they could have used their cunning to figure out how to like maybe, and this should have played into them getting challenged to a pod race. No, no, he's just like, go away. Okay. 
We're this is like I, I wish Saboba had punched him in the face and it just been like, oh Knocked shit, the he, fuck he, yeah. Out. And Qui Gon be like, I guess he's there now. Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're leaving, dude. It's like prison rules. Uh, back in the desert, there's a storm coming that will slow everything down. Anakin goes, "You guys aren't gonna make it back in time. I want to use my house. You guys can stay there." Uh, once there, Anakin shows Padme his uh, droid, uh, and that's not a sex joke. He actually literally uh, shows her a droid. But then we get introduced to C-3PO, uh, who gets introduced to R2 for the first time. And then R2 goes, your parts are showing. And that is a sex joke. <laughs> so I'm not the only one, Tim. You're I'm not, not the only you one. You and R2. Yeah. Oh. You're exactly the same. My part. <laughs> <Right. laughs> very why similar. Did, why did they take R2 with him? Or why did they take Jar Jar with him? Why like did they a, take Padme with him? Why did they take anybody? So you have, why didn't you take Obi Wan with you? Yeah. <laughs> so well, I get they left Obi Wan back there to help to guard. Take guard the queen. But Great. you have this really cool droid, or two droids. Like trade them. Can't you just? Isn't there more shit on this ship we could trade for this thing we need? Like R two. Like how about this droid? We'll take. We'll throw him in there. It doesn't matter. Yeah, he's a hero. He's a hero. He's a hero droid. He's got a. He's got a medal coming. We'll ship it to you. My, uh, let's see. Uh, Amidala gets a message from her people are dying, and and there and there's and this to contact so Naboo. You can't read uh, everyone else knows is bait, so they don't respond. They're like, "Don't respond to this. It's bait." But that doesn't matter because the signal had some sort of tracking mechanism in it that the second it was received by anyone, they would know exactly where they were. <sighs> Which makes sense because you know you you figure you put a signal out to the entire galaxy. And multiple people get it, but the one ship that gets it that doesn't respond has to. You be think it was encrypted, or everyone was just watching this, I being like, "Oh man, they're no fucked. idea." Uh, Sidious uses that to locate them on Tatooine, and he orders Darth Maul to go there and take out the Jedi first. So we can bring Amidala back to Naboo, so she can sign a peace treaty, which has absolutely no legal bearing whatsoever. Then we get this cool line: "At last, we will reveal ourselves to the Jedi. At last, we will have our revenge." And then Sidious is like, yeah, just go do the thing. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All yeah. right. Enough with And then he the like action. unveils his robe and like shows his dick. Like, no, not that. No, reveal. no not <laughs> that different that reveal. Different yeah. reveal. Yeah. Just go. Just go. <laughs> wanna, I can't wait to watch <laughs> the robot chicken Star Wars stuff again. Because oh, what did they do with Papa Palpatine? So fucking good. Uh, back on Tatooine, Anakin's mom, Shmi. Is that how you say her name? Yeah. Shmi. Mm-hmm. Uh, tells them that they're all uh, all slaves have a small explosive device in them, which will detonate if they try to escape. And that's a really cool setup for something that never pays off. Anakin, who was the best pilot in the galaxy, with pretty much the equivalent to a PhD in mechanical engineering, can't find this small thing that's embedded in his body, even though it is life threatening. People give Ray shit, you know. After this, Ray's a god. Let's put it that way. Padme uh, thinks it's atrocious that there's slavery out there in the universe, and, and that's going to be the whole point of the next three movies. Nope, not at all. Uh, but An- all Anakin wants uh, to talk about is pod racing, which he can do, which is impressive because he's a human, and humans can, can't usually do that. He must have reflexes like a Jedi, which Qui-Gon Jim is... Uh, Jim? Like, old Jim. <laughs> <laughs> Qui-Gon Jim. Good old Qui-Gon Jim. <laughs> and he's like, you must have it's reflexes... like old Ben like, Kenobi. Qui-Gonathan James. <laughs> and, then, and then he accuses... Uh, and he goes, Qui-Gon, you're a Jedi, right? And he goes, why, why would you say that? He goes, because you got a laser sword, just like all the other Jedi's, and he's like, maybe I am a Jedi. What's it? What's it to you, kid? Uh, I, love, I love this exchange. I think it's really cool. It's like, very maybe I killed it, a Jedi. It's, it's yeah, I love yeah, that. I love yeah. it. This just reminds me of you a little kid talking Jedi's? to an adult and yeah. like a cop or something. Yeah. A cop yeah, being yeah, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know, maybe I have you know falsely uh, you know arrested. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, maybe. <laughs> maybe I have planted weed on people. Who knows? Uh, they look at that scene where Charger Bank. Is eating the food right, and he catches He's it catch to show it. off. Like, oh, look I, at the yeah, fast reflexes. Fast le- reflexes. Uh, they tell Anakin and Shmi that they're in a pickle and they need money, but the junk dealers won't budge. Anakin comes up with a plan that involves his homemade pod racer, uh, and I don't know where this slave kid gets all of this free time. I don't think, and this is me saying this, that people on Tatooine understand. The virtues of slavery. Like, this kid just has all this time to be doing whatever the hell he wants, building a pod racer. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying, Watto's not running his shop right. <laughs> and yeah. he looks like really well fed, too. Yeah. This, oh, my God. They're living, they're living the life. Yeah. Uh, anyway, the plan is as follows Qui Gon will tell Watto that the pod racer is his and talk to Watto, talk Watto into letting Anakin, his valuable slave, pilot it for them. Uh, Shmi puts her foot down. Pod racing is dangerous, but Anakin won't take no for an answer. He says, Mom, you said the biggest problem in the universe is nobody helps each other. And Shmi goes, No, you're not listening to me. I said the biggest problem is slavery. <laughs> slavery is the biggest problem. <laughs> And the kid's like, oh, I misunderstood that. I'm sorry. You're right. This is a terrible situation that we're yeah, in. Right. Yeah, this is it. Uh, but Anakin, won't, uh, anyway, I think, let's see. Uh, and then he goes, he's like, I want to help her. And she's like, you know what? You're right. And then she talks to Qui-Gon again. This, it's just resolved. And she goes, he can help you. He was made to help you. 
Cool. What's her accent? I don't, I don't like, know. It's like Dutch or something. Qui-Gon goes to water to bargain. Uh, if we win, you keep the prize money and give us the parts we need. If we lose, you can keep the queen's ship. Uh, and it's crazy. You know, Qui-Gon got into debt so easily. As most of us have found out the hard way, Whoa. getting into debt is easy. That's getting really out good. is hard. Better than the whole Especially movie. if your credit score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score and offer smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Uh, this could have helped Greg Miller in college. This also could have helped uh, many characters in Star Wars Episode yep. 1 in their various points of debt, including Jar Jar, who has a life debt. Uh, Upstart goes beyond the traditional credit score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you. They understand that you might be the greatest pilot in the galaxy. They make it fast, simple, and easy to check your rate in just a few minutes and the best part is once the loan's approved and accepted most people get their funds the very next business day uh you can see why upstart is ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. and hurry to upstart.com slash morning to find out how low your upstart rate is checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit that's upstart.com slash morning also, shout out to HoneyBook. If you run your own business, you're used to doing it all. But if you're struggling to get through your to-do list, HoneyBook can help. Uh, HoneyBook is an online business management tool that organizes your client communications, bookings, contracts, and invoices all in one place. HoneyBook makes it simple to run your business better. Professional templates, e-signatures, and built-in automation helps keep everything on track and makes you look good. Uh, this sounds super helpful, super useful for people like us mm -hmm. who need a lot of these things, contracts and e-signatures and whatnot. They can even consolidate services you already use like QuickBooks, Google Suite, Excel, and MailChimp slash Gmail. We use, we use many of those things. Uh, it's the number one choice for client and business management for freelancers and business owners. Uh, right now, HoneyBook is offering you guys 50% off when you visit honeybook.com slash morning. Uh, payment is flexible and this promotion applies whether you pay monthly or annually. You can go to honeybook.com slash morning for 50% off your first year. That's honeybook.com slash morning. And finally, let's talk about some hymns. 66% of men start to lose their hair by age 35. Once you notice thinning hair, it can be too late. The best way to prevent more hair loss is to do something about it while you still have some. It's time to get a handle on those precious locks, just like Andy and Nick did. Right, Andy? Hey, guys. That's me. Hey, guys. It's Andy. <laughs> oh, yes. We both use hymns. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. How easy was it? It's super easy, man. You go online, you fill out a couple questions, they figure out a prescription treatment plan that is good for you, and they ship it right to your door. No hassle. No Would awkward doctor's visits. Were there any snake oil pills? Not that I know of. No, there was. these are all stuff backed by science. It's stuff that I've used for years, and hymns make it super easy to get all of it, uh, including the I use the shampoo, I use the finasteride pills, and I use the, the vitamins uh, that are a, a staple in my household now. If you're like me, and I, I don't like having to drive to a doctor's office, like it's not the, it's not so much the the interaction. It's more of like the, I have to go find parking and go do a whole thing. Making the time. It's going to be a whole like event. Yeah, it's hard to do that stuff. You take photos of your head, you send it in, and you get the response super quickly, and it's all very, very easy. You guys can get started with the Hims Complete Hair Kit for just $5 today. Right now, while supplies last and subject to doctor's approval, uh, you can see the website for full details and safety information. This could cost hundreds if you went to the doctor or a pharmacy somewhere else. Go to 4 slash KFMS. That's F-O-R-H-I-M-S dot com slash KFMS. 4 com slash KFMS. Back to the plot. Obi-Wan doesn't like this plan, because, but they really have no choice. He's like, this is really, really dangerous, but I guess you're right. Uh, later that night, Qui-Gon has a great moment, a quiet moment with Anakin's mom, who mentions that Anakin has magic powers, and Qui-Gon knows it's the Force. He can see things before they happen. That's why he can race. He can do pod race. It's a Jedi trait. And then he goes, who is his father? And Shmi goes, Jesus. Jesus Christ was his father. Our Lord and Savior. God. You know what? He has you know no what? father. Earlier in this review... I said that Jar Jar was the worst thing. Like yeah, no, this is the worst. Part. This is the worst thing. She didn't mean this literally, right? Like, this is one of those things where it's like the no, dad. She says, I, he doesn't have a father. And later they say he I was always, born of the force. I always assumed that that was not a literal thing where no, it was yeah. like, no, I literal. raised this kid Here's on my own. You're, you're making it more interesting where it's like, I'm a slave. Who the fuck knows who the dad is? Yeah. Yeah. It's my kid. Could be That's one of 1,000 Wattos. They, they turn him into space in this Jesus. this movie, turn him into space Jesus by saying the force made him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Jesus literal thing. It's fucking Christ. Fucking awful. Can you imagine how fucking upsetting that would be to just one day be like, Great. Fuck, I guess I'm pregnant. Didn't even do the fun part. Gosh, no. darn it. 
Uh, later, we get a great scene where Anakin has some friends, including a little, a little like chubby Greedo. Uh, he tells them that he's entering the Bunta race tomorrow, and the dialogue in the scene is enough to make me want to drink bleach. Uh, he hi, hi, his friends. There's all, a deleted scene that calls him Greedo. Like, yeah, that is actually Greedo. You're kidding me. I swear to God. Oh my God! What a terrible idea. So this is like <laughs> love what, a little. What a terrible idea. Love a little kid turns it into is. a fucking piece of shit bounty hunter. That's I mean, like that's the scum how, of the earth. Just like oh, you tell. Was he a bunny hunter? Darth Vader. Greedo? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's what he was doing. <laughs> he was trying to take Han back to Java, dead or alive, right? That's true. Just like I, just like Gina and Anthony. Hut? The Huts? Tim just me. pointed out like the funniest thing right now. What did I do? <laughs> You're like, you told me this little kid turned out to become the scum of the earth. And he was like, well, Anakin and Vader, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> it too. It'd be hilarious if that whole little group, they were all just <laughs> fucking <laughs> all horrible human beings. one little kid that gets this, a lot of lines. This is the Descendants Turns out movie. Turns out being super abused as a slave, not great for your future careers. One of those girls is Aura Singh. Like, it's, oh, God damn it. it's all fucking connected. <laughs> Uh, his friends all doubt him and basically tell him he's going to die tomorrow, but thankfully Jar Jar is there to work on the pod and hopefully not fuck everything up uh, like he always does, except he gets his hands stuck and, and his tongue numb and all that shit, and it's just a dumb scene. But all, uh, also, all the child actors in there were terrible, right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. I I was shocked. It's like, you couldn't get better and actors? And the one girl had braces. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> Whatever, Anakin, you suck. Face. Let's go play ball. Um, and the pod race is not quite working because it needs a power source, which is cool. You're like, oh, how are they going to get this power source? What is this kid going to do? Oh, no, Qui-Gon just gives him a little thumb drive. It's mm -hmm. power I also really hated watching this movie uh, on my phone because I used, like, the, the subtitles or whatever. And I'm always a subtitles user. But I, I up until this point, I had never known what Jar Jar was saying while his tongue was numb. And it's just so dumb. And it's just Isn't he saying his hand stuck? No, he's my tongue is oh, fat. Yeah. My tongue is fat. My boy, hand boy, fat tongue, boy. Stuck. My tongue. Like, it's just so, oh, it's so annoying, dude. I'll be honest with you. I'll be honest with you. Jar Jar is annoying. But doing Jar Jar, some of the most fun I've had on this podcast. So far. <laughs> oh, boy, boy, volcano curry. <laughs> It was good yesterday. Yeah. Uh, it, was good. it could be good that today. night. Uh, we should do it again. You say the word. Qui Gon oh. takes some blood. Are we from doing this. I'll order right now. <laughs> Later that night, out on the stoop, uh, just far away from everyone. <laughs> the stoop. Qui Gon takes some blood from Anakin, which no one questions. Uh, Man, I'll tell you, if I fucking like just met you, a cut right? If I, no, he's like, pfft, yeah, he's not cleaning a cut. He's one hundred. If I was me, I'd be like, no, don't, like, don't take blood from my kid. kid. What are you interjecting? Oh, sucking uh, blood. He sends it to Obi Wan to analyze the metachlorian count, which is off the charts, over twenty thousand, which is higher than Master Yoda's metachlorian. Over nine thousand. Uh, over nine thousand. What does that mean? I'm not sure. I mean, uh. Uh, uh, basically. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, great, great. Never mind. Um, so then we see Darth Maul. I I thought you were doing a bit. I was going to do the a scene, bit. which what felt kind of like that. What's that mean? Uh, uh, uh it, it, this is what it means. Here's what here's what it means. They don't say it then, but here's what it really means. It means we just define something that never ever ever needed to be defined, ever. and by doing so, completely destroyed the power of the Force. The power magic of it. The magic of it. The magic of it. The point of it. And once is that again, it's supposed to be fake. The Jedi Council, the concept of the Jedi Council actually not being good at running things and being kind of just comfortable and making a lot of really bad decisions. And yeah, is losing so their way of like what the cool. light side is about. And then this is another thing of like, you're now bringing me someone that has this number that determines all this that is higher than we've ever fucking seen and you're just like nah he's not he's definitely not the one that the prophecy talked about his, this exact thing yeah exactly talking about also they keep saying the, the he's the chosen one who will bring balance to the force but if i looked around i'd be like it seems pretty balanced there's a bunch of good people and no bad people no we'll that's talk a good balance that's for me. the balance we like i like yeah. that but that, and that, we'll talk about this. Like more when you talk the, about the balance future, in the United so. States, you don't want there to be as many terrorists as there are United States military. Like there's only two people. Sith. You know what I mean? Right? Yeah. At this point. You don't want to be like, how many people it's do we have in the armed services? A million? Let's, you know, we got to balance that out. Call there's up only, ISIS. There's only ever two, right? The rule of two, as yeah. they say at the end of the As movie. they defined in this one. Yeah. Why? Because you think you'd be like, I want 50 Sith people, as we saw. You know what I mean? Like, I want like, a bunch of these bad people. They, the lore that, like, back that up it no longer exists, right? Because it was like, oh, a long time ago there were a bunch of Sith and they were all killing each other, right? Who the fuck knows? No, no, let's move on. Uh, and then, man, just when I thought this movie couldn't get worse, it gets awesome. Because Darth Maul lands on Tatooine. And the yeah. sound here... Oh, my God. Sounds exact. It, it reminds me of when they fought in Superman 2. Because it's, like, super minimalist. And it's like bongos, like like faint bongos and like fucked up sounds. And he and he lands and he launches his little droids oh, to go out there and look. 
so oh, top cool. And he looks dope and it's so awesome. Here's, here's the thing, man. Like, and maybe so it's because we grew up with this so much, but like every single dumbass sound that they make, like that the aliens make, we know all of them. The, the intonation of all yeah, of yeah. it. It's it's so iconic. And that's why this movie still is Star Wars in a lot of ways. Real quick, Lotus Chief did make a great point in chat. Lotus Chief was like, but he did bring balance to the force. Came Vader. Yeah, but that's what I'm saying. That's exactly what I'm saying. Right. It, it and was, in doing so, destroyed dumb. all the Jedi. So if I looked at it and be like, what is your definition of balance to the force? And if they're like, oh, well, balance is we all we want a, We want a 99% majority. Yeah. <laughs> we, want there, we want there to be parity between the super evil people who are going to kill lots of people and us who are the protectors of the peace. Like, I feel like it, it's a stupid concept. When they came to test them and they're like, oh, no, he, this is no good. He's too much darkness too in him. Old. Like, don't you think Yoda should have walked up and been like, look at this and just be done? Lightsaber to the eye. Oh, okay. <laughs> Lightsaber oh, to the eye. I thought that was the Terminator 2. Like, oh, I but definitely, I also, with that sound effect, I thought it was something. But I also thought that was something. He's a squirrel. Yoda's little boot yeah, cocky. No, 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 yeah. no. No, but you think it'd be green? My first thought was that, like, I thought he was doing a Jerry the King love. Look at this. Skin color? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah Tim, this. is your cum skin color? Because I don't know. <laughs> mine's not skin color. It's not? Who? You gotta eat some more protein. Uh, the next day of the race is on. Everyone's money is on to Bulba. Uh, to Bulba, including Watto. But Qui Gon sees an opportunity for a little side hustle. He wages his new pod for Anakin and Shmi's freedom, and he's like, "No pod is worth two slaves, not by a long shot." So Watto leaves. Uh, leaves the chance to the chance cube, but Jedi's don't leave anything to the chance cube because they have the Force. Qui Gon makes the cube land on blue, so they get Anakin. Uh, cause fuck Shmi. Uh, cause he literally had a choice. Like I can free this kid's mom or the kid. I free the kid. What? Leaving the mom in slavery. I don't understand why they don't come back to free her at some later point. Like, at some, like the great, queen at of the Naboo. end of the movie, it would be cool if they were like, hey, we brought back hella gold from Naboo, and now she's here in the party. Like, land your ship in the yeah. middle of the fucking town. Get all your soldiers together and be like, we're buying this woman's freedom. This is one of those, like, presidential mm-hmm. pardons. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> and if Wado goes no, you go... Oh, okay, hold on. Look look in this little light right here. He just fucking blows his little stupid head off. But you Takes still want to win, so it'll make no difference. That's such a cool oh, my God. No, they got to leave it there because man. a rule is a rule on Tatooine, even though slavery is illegal another, everywhere else. Another thing with the gamble of stuff where it was like, all right, if uh, if we win, we get this engine that the ship needs or else it's useless. Uh, if you guys win, you get this useless en- uh, ship. Where it's like... Why would he make that trade? Well, because the yeah, ship's the worth ship's a lot of money. You just put the engine was in. it? He sell, has the engine. Not, yeah. You can sell this, it for parts and shit. But earlier he was like, oh, it might be more useful to buy a new ship. No, but that's it. So no, expensive. that's him hiking up the price. Yeah, he was just... That's him being like, might as well buy a new ship because this thing's going to be so expensive. Uh, The racers approach uh, the pods as a two-headed monster announces their names. Uh, Everyone's... It turns out Anakin's never finished a race Is that Hank Azaria, by the way? I don't know. I believe it's Hank Azaria doing the... Greg Prost. And the other guy, Scott Capitolo. Oh shit! Remember really? they did in full makeup for no reason at all. Fuck! Oh, right. It sounds exactly like Hank Azaria doing a, a an announcer. Well, just a bit outside. Like it sounds like that sort of baseball voice. Uh, everyone, That's- everyone doubts that Anakin can finish this race, but he's got twenty thousand metachlorians that say otherwise. Mm-hmm. Uh, the race. Let's see. Uh, Something shits on Jar Jar, and Shmi asks Anakin to be, sa- uh, to be safe. Before the race starts, Sebulba uh, sabotages Anakin's pod racer and then talks mad shit to him. Uh, we see Jabba the Hutt and his big ass uh, friend what does he behind say him. Makes it? He's like, hey, 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 I'm going to win now. This is why you oh, never finish. Oopsie right? or something like that. It was stupid. Oops, and somehow, <laughs> we see the Jabba's, and somehow they look worse than they did yeah. 20 years prior. Yeah. I don't understand that. The CG's uh, is terrible. The race Not starts, bad. and it is loud, and Padme gives Qui Gon shit for choosing this course of action, claiming that the queen would disapprove. Uh, wh- why she keeps this straight up this long is beyond me. Uh, Jabba spit farts a gong at a gong, and the race starts, but Anakin stalls out. Warwick Davis is there? Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah. Uh, just a little cameo yeah, Here's from him. my thing, honestly. I love this scene. I always have loved this scene, and I still do love this scene. I don't care about sports at all. Yeah. Sports and movies, I fucking love when done right. And yeah. I would argue this is an example of that. There's great world building. It doesn't last too long. I like the three laps. Each lap adds some element that's interesting. We get a lot of fun uh, fan service cameos of the Jawas, of the Tusken mm-hmm. Raiders, doing cool stuff, the Tusken Raiders at least, yeah. sniping and stuff. Right? I feel like that should not be allowed. I feel like every turn... Like people are making bets on this shit. I mean, you've well, got that, Tusken Raiders that could be paid off to shoot certain people. Well, that's, that's how point. like fucking grimy Tatooine. Is, yeah, you know, I, like they're official. I believe in that. I like that. The scene of all the ships, I love how different they all look. Yeah, I love yeah, how yeah. different all the aliens are. And I love them walking out with the flags. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It just builds so much shit. This like, is an this event. This is an event. Yeah. Yeah. This is really freaking cool. This time around. Them all taking bets on the stuff, all of that. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it.
love the different like set pieces they have of him jumping up off so the, cool. the ramp and all that shit. But, uh, and we then, see that uh, random chick that's like, Aura Singh. Saying, what's her name? Aura Singh. With the, the red hair. She's like pure she, white she, with she, the red she, yeah, like, she's like another, mohawk um, ponytail thing. Did she have a giant staff or is it a gun? I think it was gun. a sniper. All of, yeah. fucking cool. all of the sound effects, all of the sound design in this whole scene, I think, are just so perfect. And that that whole sequence where he does fly up the ramp, he's got the service ramp, and it's like silence. He, became, he finally it's became so a badass. pilot for five seconds. It's so I, cool. Yeah. I also appreciate the fact that they all have like fucking iPads that they're looking at this race, where it's oh, like yeah. it's not like them just standing around being like. I hope they it's come like Tokyo Drift or... where they're all watching well, on their phones and shit. Yeah. Uh, I will say this time around, and I know I I don't know if it's because it's the special edition where it's like the longer version of the pod race. It felt really long. There are this. added scenes. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. They it, definitely added scenes when they made the special edition because there are different character cut twos where they yeah, cut to you like see like more characters character getting knocked like, out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whatever the fuck. But um, even yeah. but even like taking those out, it just felt slower to me. I don't know why, but like. It, like you're saying, like every time I watch it, I'm into it. But I don't know for some reason it wasn't like as hype as uh, I usually get for this scene. It's it's eye candy. It's, it's yeah. Really yeah cool. it, I mean, there's there's two reasons why I mean, the scene's fine. There's two reasons why I've never been that hyped in the scene, uh, or two thing two two examples in the scene of why I think this doesn't work for me. Reminds you One, of Fast Five. Uh, <laughs> okay. Oh, <laughs> fair, fair, fair. That's a call. That's a callback. Uh, no. One is okay. So we see that he sabotages this part, right? And the the thing can't start without this part. And then we see R2-D2 realizing that, and he runs over real quick, and because he's a smart droid and part of the team, he fixes a part, and then Anakin goes, right? No, that didn't happen. We didn't see that because that didn't fucking happen. All he does is hit some buttons, and, and then, then his goes. thing goes off. And then we get an announcer that's like, oh, he's never going to catch up to them. They're a lap ahead of him because they literally lap him, and he just catches up. How? Because his ship they is they fast. Him? They never lapped him. No, but no, he no, built the fastest pod race. Somebody laps him. Somebody goes by him. At some point, if they don't laugh, no, them, no, they go really... by the other guy that didn't start. Oh, is yeah, that what it was? Quadranero with his quadruplings or whatever. I always like this name was Quadranero yeah. and he has Dude, a quad. The, the pod racers are cool, man. But, but pod, I think pod racers are no, cool, but, I, I but nothing he does in this scene yeah. is like helps further his character. I mean, but that's the he problem. He just punches the buttons movie. overall I, and I'm it not... sucks. Like, there's a perfect example of a moment where his engine becomes untethered, right? Mm -hmm. And here's how I would have written this scene if I were a fucking guy. I see where you're going. I would have had Qui Gon Jim be like, Anakin. Steady your mind, because he can't reach the thing. Yeah. Right? Steady your mind and use the force. Yeah, oh, and he would have so reached cool. out, and he literally at a point reached Dude, out, no, grab it, and connect it with the with fucking this... force. Goddamn, what does man. he use? There's a a scene selfie where stick. It looks like he's doing that, and then yeah. when you see it wide, you're like, oh, he has a selfie. He has stick. a selfie stick. Magnet, ah. That Magnus thing is cool. How uh, cool would it have been if that's when his Jedi training started? Yeah. And he gets to the council, he's like, well, I already started training, dude. Sorry. Sorry. But I do, I, I, I don't know. I kind of enjoy those those quick character thinking moments where we see... But it's not it's, it's nonsensical. Sure. We don't know what he's doing. He's just pressing more buttons. It doesn't... Yeah, it's but like, it's, it's problem solving to me. I think it's, like, cool. I think it shows, like, a young kid who's, like, figuring this shit out and noticing, like, oh, this thing is fucked up. How am I... Like, again... But it, how did he solve the problem? You're right. It makes no sense. It makes but no sense. I think it's cool to the, see a kid, like, you know, overcome on these issues went halfway to the other one and then they both turned You're right. on I'm so stupid <laughs> no, sound but effects are cool rewatching this as an adult and like it, every, anytime we, we do these like I try to sit down and give my full attention to these movies it That's gave me well, no I, I and I understand but I'm saying it gave me a lot of anxiety because like I've been in that situation where it's like, oh my god, there's a bunch of like something's going wrong, and in the moment you have to fix it quickly. Yeah. And it's one of those things where it's like, he, that's well acted. <laughs> this moment is really. <laughs> like, imagine yeah. imagine yeah. If, if it's the most dire part of this race, and he's about to lose, and all the fate of the people that are on this planet, which is basically nothing because they could just figure out another solution, doesn't matter. And it, the music silences for a second, and you hear that theme, and he's like, Anakin, or Anakin, use the Force. That'd be so cool. Would have been, and, he just, and it just gets super quiet for a second, and he looks at the thing and realizes he can reach out to it with his fucking mind. I mean, I, I like it. Not even so saying cool. use the force. Just, just steady your mind. Steady your mind, yeah, and let him do figure this. it out. Oh god, it would have been so good. And instead, it's just that's badass. Though. It's a good sound. <laughs> that sound effects are great. That's a good sound. Yeah. And this is, that's what's so sad yeah. about this whole thing is this. This actually is a fun scene. It's just I need it to be. There needed to be stakes. I needed to be emotionally connected to this same character thing and see him overcome adversity. The entire movie has the same problem where any good scene has the same issue of it should be much better based on writing and reason yeah. and idea. Duel of the Fates and Pod Racing to me are exactly equal, so, where they're, they're so cool, but they're not good.
They're just mm. It's so cool when his one engine is out and it's smoking and Sabola, but but Sabola's gaining on him and he's right behind him, just like that. I love that, dude. It's so good. You're talking Skywalker sound. You're talking like the best of the industry making these things. This whole scene is just like a master class. I I think you show this scene to like college students trying to learn about this and like look like just pay attention to all the vehicles and all the different like how every engine is like. Oh, you could tell like these are from different like a Ford doesn't sound like a Ferrari. You know what I mean? Like I love that. Shit, dude. So, so uh, the audience, the arena was uh, sound from 49ers games. Oh, that's cool. cool. Wow. Uh, uh, so real quick, someone in the chat was like, "Oh, again, at this point, he wouldn't know what the force was." And it's like, wouldn't that be an that's awesome what makes way it cooler. for to him tell to him discover what it? Was? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it would have been yes, so cool. it would have been great. That's really awesome. I'd it would have been so fucking great, just like how Ben did it in in, in uh, fucking A New Hope, where he's like, "Turn off that computer, bro." Like, use the force. Oh, okay, yeah, cool. And everyone's like, what's he doing? What's he doing? Everyone back at the thing's like, what's he doing? He's like, and we get that. He just closes his eyes. And the force comes to him. Giant Woody. This is a quick aside. Uh, the thing, when they um, when they released a special edition, they replaced Puppet Yoda with CGI Yoda, which is why his CGI looks like the best out of everybody. So much better. They should have done that to Jar Jar and the Huts. They really should have. Because like, should have uh, a lot. We, we should just cut out Jar Jar as much as humanly possible. But sure, yeah, but uh, you know, at least make him good to look at. Just cut that line, you know? Uh, That's all. Because like, by the way, that. if it comes back. Yeah. Because, wow, that was a, we did not have a good reaction to that as a populace. Uh, let's see, he, he ties up with Sebulba and then hits more buttons and then races past him and wins the race. Yay! Uh, back in the, uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, the crowd goes nuts. Back in the hangar, Shmi tells Annie he has, uh, he has, he's brought hope to those who have none. Well, I guess. Uh, Wado tries to back out of the deal, but Qui-Gon threatens to take him to the huts. Uh, Qui-Gon takes the parts of the ship, and they head back up to Anakin. Uh, they sold the pod for money. Oh, and Anakin has been freed. No big deal. We're taking him with us to be a Jedi, and your mom's staying here to rot. Uh, I'd have been like, you can take my boy with you, uh, person I just met yesterday, but you gotta break my ass out, too. Nope. No or such just thing. come back just, in like two weeks. Or that, or just I'll just go with you. I'll just go with you. The bomb, Nick. You but they've got it. a whole ship of cool stuff that could figure it out, right? Or he's or like this. How about this? It's right there. Again, they, <laughs> Jedi, <laughs> Jedi Force. they don't it's do it well, but I, I think this is another moment of like the Jedi don't really care. And also, like, the their whole thing about, like, letting go of, uh, like, possessions and, 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 and feeling and all that stuff. Like, they don't – I think that's why they decided to do that. But, again, yeah, I don't I, think it it's is. shown well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Absolutely. Shmi uh, has a moment where she tells Anakin he's, he can't stop change. He's like, I, don't, I can't go. And she's like, he can't stop change. And then he hug, and then she hugs him. And then Anakin runs off in delight and because this place Yippee. fucking sucks. And guess what? Now I have a laser sword. How wizard! Thought that one might get you, Tim. It did. Yeah. It Wizard. did. It made me angry. Nick. <laughs> oh, <wizarding. laughs> they head back to the ship, and Anakin uh, gives his mom one last hug before she goes. I can't do it, mom. I just can't do it. Will I ever see you again? Uh, yeah. I mean, you're free now, so maybe get a job at Starbucks and come back and buy my ass out of this whole fucking hellhole. Anakin promises to free his mom one day. Shmi tells him to be brave and don't look back, but also come back and free my ass real soon, like real soon. But don't look back. But also definitely come back and free me. Yeah. Like as soon I'm as scared. you get. Like, like priority <laughs> one, Jedi training. Close priority to fucking free my I ass. want cool food. Because the shit that Wado makes me do when no one's looking. <laughs> Darth Maul's droids get back to him and they report the position of the queen's ship. And Maul hops on his dope-ass motherfucking Harley. Yeah, he does. And so heads cool. toward them. Uh, Remember when the Lego get, for this? I was oh, just about to so say. Cool. The Lego I set for this was Lego fucking so cool. awesome. Yeah. And then we get the first coolest scene ever fucking put on film. He doesn't even stop, bro. Mm -mm. No, he doesn't even stop. The bike keeps going. He flips off the fucking thing. Why are, as he lights his lightsaber up, and Qui Gon's like, "What the fuck?" And just dude, they get into it. The, They're the, into it. The the way this scene like comes in, where it's like, "Come on, we gotta hurry up," and like Anakin's like, "My feet it's hurt." Scary. And it's like, "Hurry the fuck up!" It's so cool. It's but really like, scary. It, yeah. It's really confusing when they that establishing shot and they're already running. Because they don't show that they've already been chased by Maul, it's nope. just like, oh, they're just they're just they jogging like the force, to the, shit. No, the like, scene. The scene starts and ends really, really poorly, weird. and yeah. the middle of it's dope. Yeah. yeah, like if I were to write the scene, I'd be like, we're we're back at the ship, and then someone notices something's come coming, and Qui Gon, of course, being the master Jedi, realizes before everyone else, it because he's been... got the force that it's danger. Get the fuck on the yeah. ship, and but it's too late because this thing's coming fast. There's a, there's a man been... in, a, in a in a black hooded. Uh, he's a black hooded figure, and he's on a really cool bike. It should be a nice red guy. face, uh, <laughs> spiky head. Open yeah. up our door. Let's see what he's got to say. Looks fair, like the like literal. We, devil. They hadn't seen any Sith people for like, isn't it like a hundreds while. of years? Yeah, 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 but you feel like they feel them coming, right? Yeah. They're like, oh, something's bad. Uh, and what I, what I do like about this, what I like about the, the credit of what they set up here, was that. 
Darth Maul is better than Qui Gon. Oh yeah, like yeah. he Qui Gon's like gassed after this fight. Yeah. He's like, I don't know what the fuck. Just well, he happened. hasn't had to fight in forever, dude. Yeah. He hasn't like had they have actual Phil, competition. Yeah. But you, but you think it's you're like, like a cop in Daily City. It's just, it, it's very cool that they set up. Yeah. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> Jesus Christ. Let really that one go before I get pulled over later. <laughs> uh, let's see. They honestly, really I'm just gonna say this here. Qui Gon should have died here. Just saying. Okay. That could have worked. Insane. They narrowly escape no. and Qui-Gon introduces Anakin to Obi-Wan Kenobi. And what a great moment. Uh, back on Naboo, the governor reminds the viceroy that they're a democracy, which makes sense since the queen ultimately is in charge of everything. Uh, they've also looked. Uh, they've also been looking underwater uh, for the city, which is really hard to find unless you have a breathalyzer or a breath thing. Uh, back on the ship, Padme gets a message from the governor that lots of people are dying and the death toll is catastrophic. You got to get back here. Uh, she gives Anakin a blanket because he's cold and she tells him that the queen is worried. She must convince the Senate to intervene. Why wouldn't they? Everything from the trade, the trade of Federation has done is illegal. Send 300 fucking Jedis to that place and three of them, literally three of them, could kill all the droids while the other 227 took a fucking break and got Starbucks. But no, we don't have that many Jedi's. We can't do that. Throw the lightsaber like a boomerang and just have it. Mm. Like, call up the Jedi Council, but like, just go to Naboo. Take care of this. You have a bunch of Jedi's. We're going to see them later to and be all fair, die in a ring. To be fair, that is what they did. They called up the Jedi Council, council and were like, send a couple Jedi's to go fix the situation. Yeah, it's and like, it didn't go well. It's like Captain Marvel. You know, there's a lot of. Whatever's happening here is happening everywhere, man. Fair. Uh, Anakin makes a Puka Shell necklace for Padme so she'll remember him. And the scene <laughs> yeah, but, is just sexy as hell. Just kidding. It's weird as fuck. It's very weird. It's <laughs> that was very, real funny, very Nick. weird. That was real funny. Uh, I wrote, is she his new mother or future lover? Only time will tell. <laughs> they arrive on Coruscant, uh, and the entire planet is one big city. It's so fucking cool. Fucking uh, cool. It's so fucking cool. And like, here's this is a weird thing where it's like, I give Coruscant the CG pass, where I'm like, that's the look of this city. And I'm like, cool. I'm okay with that. The, and I feel the like concept is cool. Enough, the co- right? concept's yeah. awesome. The concept's cool enough, but also the, the look. I'm like, I'm all right with yeah. it looking like that because yeah. it's different in form. Because it's the capital city of the galaxy, pretty much, right? The mm-hmm. Galactic Republic, and it's it's cool that it's not just the city; it's a whole planet. I love it. And actually, I'm looking forward to seeing some of those scenes later. I think in uh, Attack of the Clones, where it's like nighttime, yeah. The bar and stuff. Yeah. I, those I, are some I of my really favorite cool. scenes in the I prequels. Just, I like, wish we had more moments of Anakin like more freaking out at. Anything, these, at, really. at these places that aren't Tatooine, because this is all he's seen. In his yeah, life. it's very yeah. different than just yeah. sand. What movie is it where where the uh, woman's in a spaceship? She sees green. And she's like, "What is that's that?" Ray, that's uh, episode oh, that's Ray. That's episode seven. And yeah, she's yeah. like, "I didn't know there was so much green in the." the I, like, I that's wish we had some of that movie. for him yeah. to be fine. Of course, I'm like, "What the fuck is this, yeah. dude? Oh my yeah. god!" Uh, when they arrive on Coruscant, the, uh, Chancellor Valorium and Palpatine are there to meet them uh, as they land, which is a scene that does not look good. They tell the Queen <laughs> they've called for an emergency Senate meeting, and there's a question of procedure, but Palpatine is confident they can overcome it. What is that? What does that mean? I don't know. It's just a more filler for why this is really hard and why people are stupid. We're trying uh, to get to the next scene, dude. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll just, just keep going. Uh, up in Palpatine's pimp pad, everything is wrapped in red leather and it is deep looking. Palpatine tells Amidala uh, that their best choice uh, uh, is to push for an election of a stronger Supreme Chancellor. And should she call for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorium, uh, the only other chance is to appeal to the courts. But that's going to take forever. Uh, guess we'll have dude, to and, accept. And here's the thing: all this, all of this dialogue, all I hear is. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm like, what the fuck's happening? I hate this so much, and like, you guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. No, no. It's like this is totally just like, shit. We gotta get him in power somehow. How do we do that? Uh, yeah. well, and and this is the frustrating thing because again, this idea, this concept is cool. Of the the emperor from the original trilogy was not some outside force that came in and like they had a war and he took over. It he was came like, from the inside. He came from. He the made inside, it all happen, and that's how you take uh, that kind of power like over. And it's such a cool concept. Cool concept. They just don't know how to re- execute it. Poorly execute it. Execute yeah. it. Order. Uh, six, 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 six. The only other chance we have is to appeal to the, uh, to, appeal to the courts, which will take forever. Uh, and she says, we can't do that. We'll, we'll have to accept Federation. He says, we'll have to accept Federation control for the time being. And she says, that is something I cannot do. And then we get the best scene later that night as the sun sets and the electric capital comes to life. Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi make their way up the giant staircase to the Jedi Temple to see the uh, to seek the knowledge of the Jedi Council. Obi-Wan is nervous. As an apprentice, he's never stepped foot in the Council room before. That kind of honor is reserved only for the most esteemed and distinguished Jedi warriors. Worry not, my young apprentice. The Force will guide you, says Qui-Gon Jinn with a smirk, uh, taking minor delight in his young friend's so discomfort. Cool. As the massive doors to the temple open, we see a sight few have ever laid eyes on. A massively dimly lit palace where the balance of the universe is carefully and quietly decided. 
They enter the council as, as the council is already in session. Fellow Jedi Knight Mace Windu motions to Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan to be quiet and take a seat as we hear the, the voice first of Jedi Master Yoda ring out. As he, no, none of that shit happened. They're just in the fucking room. <laughs> I was about to say, I was like, whoa, yeah. Nick. <laughs> like, right. you're making this way cooler no, than it actually None of that was. happened. It just cuts, and we're in the fucking room with Yoda and Mace Windu, who we've never met before. Who are these people? Who are yeah. these people? No. We're just, we're like, and they're not even in a room. They're like in that weird offshoot third floor of a hotel where like all the meeting rooms happen. You know what I mean? It, it would have been really, cool if it was, was just, really cool, if, it would have been cool if it was the room. Yeah. And then they like, and then you just hear like, <laughs> like, imagine if it, like okay, and they turn so, around like, oh my God. And then the audience like, Ooh. here, here's what I wish they'd have done. Like that moment where, where C3PO and R2 go to Jabba's cat and they have this larger than life door. This, and it's, it's very much thematically like, oh my God, this thing we're about to do is like way bigger than us. The Jedi Council should have been way bigger than any one person, but they're in a fucking like a lounge at Starbucks. They're in the lobby of a of a La Quinta. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and it's so sad because I'm like, oh, they're gonna. Oh. They just they missed a beautiful moment, and we just and Yoda's just there because they just assume all the audience knows Yoda, except for all those kids that are watching this for the first time. And Yoda's not special at all. He's just this thing. I knew. But I mean, no, was. that's not like I feel like all the kids that are watching this yeah. had already seen the the. But pay him the reverence. Series. That he's the head of the Jedi that. Council. He is Jedi Master Yoda. Not a knight. He's a fucking master. Can you at this imagine thing. the people that to this day argue you should start with episode one? Jesus Christ. No. <laughs> no. I God, hate no. Anyway. So uh, hey, man. What's what's the point of this scene? Well, we're, we're going to look into the whole Darth Maul situation. Also, Qui-Gon wants to train Anakin because he's uh, he's got this metachlorian count that's super big. Uh, and they're like, cool. Well, we're not going to decide any of this right now. You just bring him before us. What was the point of this scene, I wonder? I don't know. Uh... We get a dumb scene where Anakin tries to say bye to Padme, but she's really the queen, uh, or not? Who the fuck knows? Uh, <laughs> the senator, the senator uh, hearing begins, and Palpatine introduces Queen Amidala, recently elected leader of the Naboo. I don't know how she's elected, but whatever. Uh, lots of talking happens, and the Senate wants to form a committee to investigate, but Amidala wants action now. She moves for a vote of no confidence in Chancellor Valorium's leadership, and instead of making an impoverished or like an impassioned speech as to why he should remain chancellor, <laughs> he just sits down. That's it. Uh, Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon take a nice evening stroll for uh, some exposition, which is completely useless. We won't even get into it. Uh, up at the council, Anakin is finally brought there, and, he, uh, and they're quizzing him, and they're doing the card scene from Ghostbusters. Only he gets it right this time instead of the other kid who freaks a out. A cup? A starship. A ship. Another starship. A cup. A cup. <laughs> they should make a Star Wars podcast called, like, a star a cup of ship. Yeah. Right? You know what I mean? Like It'd be about as useless yeah. as this scene. Yeah. Anakin is afraid to lose his mother, which has everything to do with everything. Fear? He's is like, he's like, what does that have to do with anything? Uh, fear is the path to the dark side. Fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to overeating. Overeating leads to choosing marching band instead of football. Marching band leads to Kevin making fun of you. I sense much fear in you, he says. Then here. Anakin, I'm just filling in my details yeah. from because yeah, I yeah, want yeah. this to be interesting. Uh, then Anakin pleads to the council of all. Uh... Oh, he says, I sense much no. fear with you. And then Anakin pleads to the council. I don't know how. All of my life I've known fear. Uh, it has been. It is what defined my people, but for some reason, since being born in slavery, I see another way. This is the first time I've ever seen another way. Train me in the ways of the Force, and I will free my people and bring peace to. No, none of this happened either. He just says, sorry. He just goes, I don't know. Really and then the scene ends. It just fucking ends. It does yeah, just end. It, it does just, just fucking ends. ends. Really? Another great moment where this kid is brought before fucking Jedi Master Yoda and goes, I don't know. And they go, I don't know either. And it ends. And no resolution. But <laughs> no really, resolution. Re really quick, I do love the uh, fear leads to anger. Anger leads to hate. Hate leads to suffering. Suffering to the dark side just the way he delivers it it is like a very like oh fuck this is like yoda trying to like tell this kid like hey you are very close to skating this line here yeah so. yeah that's one of the most memorable things i i remember as yeah. a kid like that's one of the lines that i have but we already had a constantly scene. requoted <laughs> this is the problem yeah. is like what remember when we were talking about how movies like have like zero fat on them what was the last oh we're talking about T terminator T2. 2 which hasn't happened yet right now in the span of us no. yeah, this, right? no. yeah i don't know how that works future past spoilers T2 is every scene has a point and is lean and it so needs okay. to be in there. And if it's yeah. not in there, they cut it out. We just had another scene where they doubted it. There's five scenes in a row where they're like, we don't know if we should train Anakin or not. And Anakin does nothing to convince them otherwise. It's literally just Zero like, nothing. And it's like, like it's so sad. God, like, maybe, maybe they're right. You know, <laughs> take me home. I miss my mom. <laughs> then, we get, then we get this scene next. Amidala has a quiet moment with Jar Jar that's interrupted by P Captain Panaka and Palpatine who come in and say, guess what? I've been nominated 
Supreme Chancellor, off camera, this pivotal moment where he gets to take control of the Senate through all of his misdeeds and all of his backdoor dealings and all backroom dealings and all that shit, he finally gets what he wants, which is control of this thing. And we don't see it. This Senate that we saw with all of these fucking this, little things this where people hub are, of power for the and, galaxy. And we see this guy sit down instead of a scene that's just like, well, then what do you propose we do? Well, what about this? Well, what about that squabble for a little bit? And then somehow give some story that makes sense for why he should be the guy. Or I'm just going to throw this out there, right? He is a fucking Sith Lord. Show him mesmerizing the audience show him conning his way with his power into yeah. this because that's what he's really doing here but not really he's really just using politics where he should be using the force uh, i digress you didn't like the thing where they like threw out the alderaan guy that will fu- be the future you know it's, that- well it was fun and, and you didn't like the moment where char char's like ah we never run away from a fight which uh for- foreshadows you know their thing later it was really cool right? and then after he's been nominated for super king counselor, uh, Queen Amidala deciding that the Republic no longer functions, even though it just functioned perfectly for her because her senator is now the leader of this whole thing. <laughs> she decides. It's like, yo, same team, man. But like, she's like, this place is broken. He's like, is it? I mean, no, we just got what we wanted. She's like, I'm heading back to Naboo. And he's like, that's a terrible idea. They're going to kill you there. But she's like, my people are dying. What are you going to do when you get there? Ah, we'll figure it out. I got like a plane ride. It's cool. It's like when you got to do homework. It's, it's Saturday night. That's what Sunday nights are for. That night, the Jedi Council decide not to train Anakin because he's too old and his future is dark and uncertain. But Qui-Gon puts his foot down saying, I'm going to train him no matter what. And yet, uh, Yoda says, he already has a Padawan. And Qui-Gon goes, nah, Obi-Wan's, uh, he's good, man. He's actually pretty good. Uh, he cuts him loose pretty fast. He's ready for the trial. He's been good. I've just been having him do like the bullshit chores yeah. I haven't wanted to do. And then he says a very <laughs> horrible yeah. scene, dude. <laughs> then he says a really it's cool dumb. line. He goes, he's ready for the trials. And I go, oh, cool. Oh, wow. We're going to see those yeah, trials. Yeah, really cool. We're going to see Obi-Wan Kenobi become go from uh, Padawan Apprentice to Jedi Knight Obi-Wan Kenobi. No, no he's good. He's, he's already it, Knight. Wouldn't it have been awesome Pretty if at sure that man. moment, yeah, just took off the little ponytail? No, because we would have been like, why didn't he just cut Oh, I mean, I guess we would have. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to Jedi. I thought you were going to lightsaber him to the brain no, as well. that would make <laughs> sense. Uh, Mace Windu, who we don't really know why he's here or what he does, orders Qui-Gon to go to Naboo with the Queen to uncover the dark Sith character that uh, attacked them. Now, he orders two people back to a war zone where they were horribly ineffective there to begin with and sends no one else with him. Send how many, Hey, right. well, how, many, how many Jedis we got right now down in the lounge, the other lounge? Not this lounge. The, the fourth lounge. What's Kiati Mundi up to? What are all these people up to? Put them in a 14 ships and let's go have them fuck up the capital of Naboo real quick. Plo Koon, get your goddamn orange boss. lightsaber. Get that let's orange go. saber out Kit there, man. Kit was That's always cool. my favorite. Like, he looks so cool. Mm. And we see him hold a lightsaber for 10 seconds and he's dead. Uh, How the, does that one fucker with the eight foot long neck fight? Not well. Not <laughs> easily. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, <laughs> he's just it's like all, a giraffe. He, he starts swinging it the, around. He's just in the background, like doing. That. He reminds me of a uh, of a uh, Dana Carvey, the turtle, in uh, yeah, in that fucking it's 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 a terrible movie. movie. Uh, before leaving for Naboo, Anakin uh, has a moment with Qui Gon where he pulls him aside and asks him about the Metachlorians, uh, so Qui Gon can explain what the fuck a Metachlorian is. And I stop listening. Oh. I'm not even gonna fucking say the rest no. of the scene. Darth Sidious uh, talks. Uh, tells the Viceroy he's sending his apprentice Darth Maul to help secure the planet and kill the Jedi and make sure all restaurants serve Pepsi instead of Coke. They land, uh, and the Queen tells Jar Jar to enlist the help of the Gungans to help fight. So they uh, so they go there with Queen Amidala, but it's not the Queen, because Padme's the Queen. Ha-ha! Finally. I'm Finally. The queen. And I need to tell you that you need to help us. And everyone else is like, yeah, that makes sense. And then Amidala throws herself at the mercy of the Gungan leader, and he goes, oh, we stop being friends. Cool, we figured it out. Uh, yippee! Oh my god. Fuck me with the cheese grater. Everyone gets set up for battle and Jar Jar gets promoted to general. <laughs> Why not? Thankfully, the battle is a diversion. The real plan, while all the Gungans die, is that we're going to go it's, to the battle. And she says it I, in I front felt, of the king. Yeah, I felt like they said it right in front of him, and he was like, whoa, 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 whoa. We'll be fucking cannon fodder. Yeah, wait, wait. Yeah, we're, we're in. Yeah, yeah, my guys are fine. You, and it's you like, well, no, I think we can think of a better plan. And he's like, no, no, no. We're in. <laughs> We're frogs. We multiply like a lot. Why does he keep doing that sound? It's cool. I like it. It's weird. It's weird. Uh, the real plan is to end the palace like, and capture the, the viceroy. None of the those noises. You know? And none of them look like him. Yeah. And then I, she goes. Yeah, he looks like an obese one. You know. It's like his gavel. Weird where like that's his final say. Like. Yeah. <laughs> I like that he's got his his uh, ears tied back like a ponytail. Everybody has a snout. He doesn't. It's so. He's weird. the king. That's why. It falls off he when you become there. king. Uh, uh, 
Thankfully, the, the real plan is to enter the palace, capture the viceroy. Without the viceroy, they'll be lost and confused. But thing, but in just in case, let's go up and blow that shit up because uh, they somehow know all the droids are tethered to that ship. They figured it out. Uh, let's see. Hey also, man, that was a moon. Why providing doesn't anyone shields. else go in there? You know, man, Natalie Portman. Because it seemed is, like there was no protection for that. Just no one had thought of like, oh, you can just put a ship in there and shoot everything, and it'll too explode. Risky. Back in the palace, the viceroy again, once again talking to Sidious, asks for permission to send a bunch of droids to kill the Gungan army, and he's all like, "This wipe them out, all of them," which was in the trailer, and it was a cool line too. But uh, let's see, start with Jar Jar. Actually, as long as you kill Jar Jar and the Gungan King, we'll we'll call this a big old fat W. That'll just be a win for us. The Gungans throw a shield up and droids attack. The strike team begins their covert plan to sneak into the palace, which consists of them just running head on at all of the fucking troops like idiots. Uh, they take the hangar and Anakin Hines in a plane cockpit because how else are we going to get his ass up into space? Uh, up in space, the fighters have to take out the Federation ship or something will happen. I can't remember. Down on the battlefield, the droids uh, act, uh, activate and it's ouch time is one yeah. of what the characters say. Yeah, it's ouchy time. Ouch, time indeed. Obi-Wan, uh, Qui-Gon. <laughs> you just described my whole experience uh, Oh, yeah, and then the General movie. Jar Jar tries to throw a bomb and falls down, and then it is ouch. It's all ouchy. Uh, Obi-Wan, Qui-Gon, and Amidala and the gang head toward the throne room to get the Viceroy. Uh, Qui-Gon tells Anakin to stay in the cockpit where he'll be safe. And then they he head does. to the main uh -huh. hangar door. Yeah, yeah, I know. Then they head to this giant main hangar door. And fuck, I needed this scene. Oh, it's so good. Because it opens, and we get that. We ba -ba! Get, uh, it's so cool. So and then fucking they cut cool. Away. And then they cut away. Yeah. They cut away. Well, no, before they cut away, uh, Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan step up and he goes, we'll handle this. And yeah. they take their robes oh, off. God. And then Darth Maul does the thing where he goes, and he takes the thing out and one goes out and then the other is, one goes is out. Is that then? I think it's yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's yeah. that. Yeah. Because they start not cut in between? No, no. no and then don't. they cut away. Yeah, then they yeah. cut. Yeah. And then we catch up to them and they're fighting. I, I hear, I, well, here's what I would have said. All right. All right. We got this powerful Sith Lord in front of us, <laughs> right? <laughs> As we haven't seen one of these guys in forever. Let's all attack. Let's all just swing. We'll swing for his head. All of you 12 soldiers around us, shoot his feet. He can't. There's he only. Can't, it's not physically yeah, possible. Yes. You can't defend two points. Just keep on doing that to his head and he'll just be like, ah, shoot the feet. Fucking shoot the feet. Yeah. Shoot the yeah. right? dick, dude. He's yeah. a little Darth Jesus Maul Christ. Dick. Like. I will, say, then, I will say this. Oh God. Darth Maul, cool. cool. coolest character in this. Uh, it's one big spike, his dick. <laughs> Dar oh. Darth Maul, at least in the movies, is the Boba Fett of this trilogy. And I was like, and when I was a kid, I was like, God, I hope he makes it to the next two movies. Wouldn't it be cool if he killed Qui Gon in this one, which set Obi Wan on a path to train harder and truly master the Force, so he, and, and his own anger, so he can avenge the death of his master and become a Jedi Knight? Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. No. Meanwhile, uh, instead, another long, like, well. Thought or like easily seen move, just flips over, just like all of Obi Wan's long swings at droids. Uh, he just fucking looks like what is he doing, dude? Anyway, well, hold, hold on, hold on. Future spoilers for this. Yeah, if you don't fucking know, these movies don't even follow their own rules. If there's one thing that's memorable from Episode Three, it's <laughs> I have the high ground, which mm -hmm. means he's fucked. Yeah, he's fucked. Who had the high ground here? Oh, very high ground. Oh, who? He it had was Darth Maul. Darth Maul like had such high ground that he took a moment just to fuck, fuck with him. He was like, I like that part where he's he, like skating his. Uh, he had the high ground, and he was the thing. only one to have a weapon. It's yeah. just, it is fucking insane. But like when Obi Wan that, that jumps up, just like uh. start and end this prequel <laughs> with with Obi Wan with the same character that says that. Meanwhile, the Whirly Dolls roll in, uh, the Whirly Droids roll in, and start blasting everything. Uh, and they go, oh, fuck, we gotta do what we gotta do. Uh, and then Anakin shoots And then Anakin him. goes, okay, where's the trigger? And he hits everything but the trigger. For a kid who's pilots, he's a great pilot, he sure as fuck does not know how the cockpit of a, of a ship works. Doesn't matter. Blows some stuff away, accidentally hits the autopilot, or whatever, and takes off. That's a fun feature, right? There's just a button that will take you to the battle. Yeah. What, oh, what droid was uh, with him? Oh, R2-D2. Uh, happened to be there. Oh, okay. Somehow. Okay. How did they put him in there? He went in. He was just in there? I think he was waiting for a pilot. Oh, okay. He got shot or something. Uh, let's see. Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan fight Darth Maul, and it is fucking everything. I got to give it to this because cool. I, but I think this is the part where Darth Maul does arguably the coolest thing any Force user has ever done, where he's fighting, and he points at a fucking thing, and then throws the thing at the door, and oh, it opens so the cool. door. 
And it's so cool because he doesn't even break stride. It's just part of the choreography. Yeah. He goes, whoosh, bang, and then just flex more. And, everyone, and at that point, I'd be like this. We're not going to win this. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's really good. No, fuck yeah. yeah, real good. Like, when, when, when the chase. This guy's the Tom Brady of fucking. Yeah, also, stop chasing him. Let him when, come to you. When the pursuit continues, like, and I'm Qui-Gon and I'm behind a wall and my, my Padawan, who's like probably my only hope to win this, is right. four walls behind. I'll wait for him. I would have fucking ran backwards. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we gotta regroup. Fuck, uh, we we gotta regroup. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is hard. It's your turn. It's your turn now. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm old. I'm, I'm almost 40. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, but in 20 years, I'll be chasing after my daughter. Yeah, it'll, it'll, be, it'll be hot. It'll be hot. Uh, Jar Jar kills some droids by falling down. The deflector shield up his base is too strong. Thankfully, Anakin is there. He asks R2 to disengage the autopilot so he can fuck some shit up. After all, Qui Gon did tell him to stay in the cockpit, so that's what he's gonna do. I'll try spinning. Then he spins. I hate that that's line. That's a good move. I uh, hate that line. But it's cool when it comes back in episode three, right? At the beginning of the movie. Oh, it's Christ. real cool. At the palace, Amidala and Panaka use grappling hooks. Who, why the fuck they get those? So scale up to the throne <laughs> room. What do they call them? They flip it up. They all of them look. It yeah. looks so bad. It's, it's don't they so say, stupid. like, uh, get the ascension guns? Yeah. And it's just like, you just go grappling hook, but all right. Yeah. I would have been like, oh, They're like, we're going to get sued by DC. <laughs> <laughs> I would have gone way past my marker. <laughs> Shit, how do I get that? Yours just goes up and over yeah. the other side of the I'll door. meet you down there. I'll when, find when, a staircase. When they get up there... Everyone like dramatically moves and they shoot the window and then the window explodes. It's like, why didn't they just like break yeah, it? Yeah, that seemed like a lot. And sucks. none of this matters because guess what? Duel of Fates is happening downstairs and it's fucking awesome. Obi Wan gets kicked off of a platform and has to catch up to Qui Gon and Maul, who are now trapped in a force wall room thing. That they gotta really design these rooms a little better. I'm like, guys, this is unsafe because not only is this laser walls, but at least it's just a giant hole. Just a giant hole. Why is there always giant holes. There's always holes, man. Why are like, there what, laser what, walls? Yeah, like what's the what's, what the fuck is the what, point? What's the point? Someone was designing this building. We're like, all right, fuck. Um, we need to vent this laser energy. Yeah. Uh, maybe let's do it into this hallway. Also, it'll slow down the traffic into this room that fucking it just has a giant hole. You know I, I, that way, no one runs into this room. You know it's actually it a concert me. venue. They want to prevent people from running to the uh, stage. Yeah. Yeah. It I, reminds me of like a hotel where you have to buzz your key in the elevator to get up uh, to the rooms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're always drunk and you go, I can't. God, figure, that I happened can't to me so many. I can't make this Oh my work. God, when we're in Toronto, Nick, I like, I got in the but elevator, like elevator at first. two in the morning and I fucking go to the thing and I'm like, Oh, oh! I haven't buzzed a thing yet. Boop! Too late. I'm already going up to somebody else's Great. floor. Uh, it, 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 I, I, in my head canon, I like to think it was someone like Tim Gettys who designed that, and was just like, "Yo, fucking, fucking lasers are red." Cool. Yeah, his favorite color is red. Be real. Yeah. <laughs> <There's some laughs> Tim Gettys out there. No, real talk though. Doesn't make sense. Fucking cool as hell. Oh, dumb. But fuck. again, exactly. here's the problem though. Like Return of the Jedi, three planes of action, Endor, uh, the Emperor fight, and then the the space fight. Right. All three of those things. For all the shit we'll give the Ewoks and all of that, at least there was interesting they had, things but they also happening. Had purpose. And Han was there. Yeah. And Leia, Leia was, was there. there. Like, we're getting some cool moments. And also, Han tapped a soldier on the back. Yeah. And we're also, like, like, what? But in Return of the Jedi, we also by. have all Terrible. the tension that's being built in the throne room, which is like, yes, it is exposition, but it's like, but it's, it gets so fucking yeah. tense, and it culminates with them fighting, and with him actually giving into his fear. And also, the, all, also works, the, all those things build where it's like they're working. Yeah, with, they're with intricately each other. connected. Whereas yeah. here, we get four things: we get Amidala and her little group running around the palace. We get Anakin in fucking space. We have the duel of fates, and then we have cool. Jar Jar falling with horrible CG in an open green field. Yeah. It's not interesting to look Nothing at. Nothing happens. All. It's not like he takes out a giant like squadron. He takes, he takes, he takes out, out one tank, one tank, and a couple of dudes. Yeah, it's terrible. the fucking Windows ninety eight screensaver yes. that yeah. they're uh, fighting on. When and we, the, we but, peek over. I was like, oh the shit! Sound effect is so cool when they and hit the, the shields. The shields are cool. Uh, then they all get surrounded, and it looks pretty dire for them. Up in space, Anakin accidentally flies into a tra Federation, fade uh, Federation trade ship, and his uh, his ship stalls, and he can't figure out how to get it back on. Uh, duel of Face Time. The walls let loose. Uh, this is. We do have that great scene though, where like the walls capture them, and like Qui Gon just sits and starts meditating. Beautiful. Yeah, that's while really fucking Maul, like a goddamn caged <laughs> lion, is pacing back and forth, like I'm gonna kill you. And Obi Wan like, Shit. tripping balls because he knows they're gonna die. Yeah, because he's now seen his master, who's better than him, get schooled by this dude. This dude took on both of them. Was like, oh, I'm not even sweating. Dude, not, not one. Not even sweating my makeup but off. But two of the four planes of action. All we're getting are characters that are just fumbling and accidentally doing things. Yeah, I know. It's so stupid. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, I, real quick, the line where, where his like ship goes down in inside that other yeah. spaceship, there is a exposition line of him being like, it's overheated. 
Let's wait till it cools down. Why would all of a ship overheat and then it just shut down? That seems like a bad design, right? Also, we've never seen a ship overheat. Also, when he like, uh, when he falls into there and it's overheated, the droids start walking over and then they don't. They make don't it do all anything. The way they over all just until fucking stand it magically starts again. And yep. it's like that was ten minutes. It took you ten minutes to walk. Yeah. Also, the paint of a room. This what ship was out in space. Space is fucking cold. Like, really, re- like, negative 200 degrees Celsius cold. Wow, science would care. No, that so but it made it out of the atmosphere, which would have heated it up. So it's like, yeah. how's this thing overheat? I matter. do love the really cool effect, though, when when uh, Anakin's ship does come back on, you see the shield, like, like kind of, like, form around it. I, I've always loved the idea of, like, invisible but shields But it's one of those things where, like, bullets and, well, stuff. and to Barrett's point, like, the shield should have stayed. And they should have been hammering that thing with laser blasts. Yeah. And we should have sh- seen the shield go down until Anakin was like, fuck, I gotta now use the... Oh, hey, remember that thing that Qui-Gon told me about when I was on my the pod racer? I'm gonna try that thing again and see if I can't fix the part or do whatever the fuck I need to do or open the door that I need to get out of or whatever. Or, may- or maybe force. take down all the droids in the yeah, room. Right, even knowing where like to like fucking shoot, like, oh, should I shoot out. over yeah. here? Right. Boom. Oh, Let shit, that started hit. catastrophic but explosion. But no, what happens... The ship just comes back online, and he yeah. blasts something that he doesn't even know what he's shooting. Something we don't even know. We don't know. Like that's it's never set up. No. Do we know what he shoots? Uh, the uh, they, they, they cut over to the other. The, 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 it's like slight context clues of it. Yeah, looks like, like the energy dropped here. But it's bullshit. The context clues are oh, they saw a New Hope. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he bl- he shoots that. That's later. Uh, meanwhile, the doors open, and Qui Gon and Maul just go at each other. But Obi Wan is once again stopped. They start fighting around a big asshole. Uh, but and they, and Qui Gon fights valiantly, but he's just no match for Maul. Remember when they him ran the really really fast at the beginning of this mm. movie? Mm. Why the fuck would Obi Wan not run? Really fast. I don't know. He, he didn't know when the laser was going to go off. So he's never played Mario. That's he can't his, time shit. His cooldown was wasn't up yet. Yeah. It, was, it was still a long time to use it. Uh, don't man. Don't set up something like that. He no. get he gets stabbed, and then Obi Wan's like, no. And then he gives into his hate, <laughs> and fear leads to drugs, and drugs lead to a VH1 behind the music. In the throne room, Padme is caught and surrounded by the Viceroy. Thankfully, her decoy is still dressed as a queen, catches up to the room, like, oh, that's a real queen, let's go get her. And then Padme reaches into her throne, where she keeps a gun, and goes, I've got you. Two guns. There's one for me. Oh, that's one right. One, you, that's a little, gun, a little gun under the pillow, man. Yeah, I yeah. guess so. Uh, we got you. But also, that and situation now the war can end. was diffused so quickly to like, all right, lock the doors. All right, you're going to fucking sign this treaty. It's like, and I remember right, well, as a kid thinking those are the fastest fucking doors I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. yeah it, those things are like one to two frames. Just, like, oh my God. Imagine that having your you. foot under that there. That would have killed you. Yeah. Uh, down, back down to the Duel of Fates, uh, the, door, the laser doors open up and Obi Wan rushes Maul and, we, and they fucking make it happen. And man. we see the coolest like flip, sideways flip that. No, Maul when he does, does the little double flip that Dude, Maul does. So Maul badass. does like a sexy fucking ninja bat kick into him too. I'm like, that's dope as fuck. Uh, he knocks Obi-Wan into the hole and kicks his lightsaber in as well. Obi-Wan hangs on by a thread. Uh, up in the trade ship, Anakin blasts the thing, gets out, everything's great, great. That, uh, the fucking battlefield, all the droids just drop, and everyone's like, cool, we won. Why right. would they not have like a backup? Like, and when my Hugh fucking light loses connection to the thing, right. it knows what to do. Now, as Anakin, <laughs> by the way, I know exactly. Uh, and then the great part is, as Anakin is uh, blasting his way out of the ship, what does he scream to him? Now this is Yippee. pod racing. Now this oh, no. right, yeah, is no. pod yeah. racing. To which I'm like, I'm like, hey man, it isn't not, though. Not to be a dick, but like you can't just scream that whenever. You, yeah. Like if someone, if I order a, a, a grande iced coffee and they accidentally give me a venti iced coffee, I can't be like, well now this is pod racing. Well you can. Maybe you can start doing that I'm now. Sorry, I'm gonna do it from Please now do on. Please do it. <laughs> <laughs> from now on. Uh, thankfully, the, Wait, uh, real see. quick, g- just going back to the the fight that Obi Wan has before he falls into the hole. I loved how like angry. And like, oh, you tapping in the dark side a little oh, yeah, bit because you're doing some fucking damage. Well, I do love when they actually kill Qui Gon, and the the scene before you see Obi Wan go, like react, like, oh, he's gonna die right here. Like, there's that cool moment where it, it, it's really hard to notice, but he's behind the red wall, and you know, throughout the whole scene, Obi Wan standing there and just like, oh, come on, come on, come on. And then they show him, they well, cut so to Obi Wan, he goes. It's, like, oh, fuck. Like, if, it's uh, about to happen. I'm, I'm going to tell, tell everyone right this right now. If I'm fighting someone that you know I can't beat, and you have a, an opportunity, you have the power to reach out with your mind and do shit, please do shit. 
Start making shit float around at least, like something for a distraction. Remember when like Vader was like, I'm gonna make this thing hit you, and you're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, I can't hit him. I'm, I'm not trained. Suddenly. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yeah, uh, but it breaks a si- breaks a lightsaber in half. So dope. Like, oh yeah, that was cool. That's Super really cool. cool. Uh, well, he flips yeah. up. Like, but also very that. convenient for like that lightsaber to function that way, where it's just very modular. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You cut it right at the right perfect <laughs> part. Yeah, you know? it's not. Jedi. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, he's stuck down there. Mars Maul's doing the thing where he's like, if I were Maul, I would have been standing thought... up there just like force, like, uh, fucking, uh, lightning, <laughs> shoot lightning at his hand or something. Uh, like. But it's cool because Obi Wan realizes that Qui Gon's lightsaber is still over there, and he sees it with his mind. And he goes, "Cool," and then he does a, a fucking Jedi pull up. He just does some subs and flips over does him, subs. and then cuts, and then with a spray of blood, cuts him in half. Which and is the we, only time we ever, ever see, see blood. blood. Yeah. And then we see him fall, and as he falls, cool shot, his body comes apart. But can you imagine... And is that hit the last of him? Can you yeah, imagine... In the movies, it is. Can you in imagine Saga. Obi-Wan flying up and Maul just sticking out his lightsaber? <laughs> you just yeah. cuts him in half. <laughs> <He just splits. laughs> it's so easy, Man. Maul. Like, you did the most amazing things this whole fight. Why now do you suddenly, like, Suck. become a, an infant uh, IQ? Like, it's like so he should have cut his arm off or something, and Maul, I'm like, God damn it. He just looks at him. Left. Fly over anyway, him. Anyway, Obi-Wan rushes over to Qui-Gon, uh, and, but it's too late. He makes Qui- uh, Qui-Gon makes Obi-Wan promise to try Train Anakin. Uh, he is the chosen one who will bring balance to the Force. Again, everything seems pretty balanced right now. Why we would need this is beyond me. But uh, mm-hmm. we've only ever encountered literally one Sith Lord in our entire be- in existence. But uh, let's train this little kid anyway. Maybe he can kill everyone like Thanos. They send the Viceroy back to the Senate to explain his actions. He can kiss his trade franchise goodbye. Is that what he was trying to do this whole time? Makes sense. Palpatine congratulates everyone, <laughs> including Anakin, uh, who he'll he'll watch closely until he can make him a little, into a little baby killer later. Uh, then he congratulates Amidala on saving our people. And this is the first time again I realized he was actually the senator from Naboo. How does this Galactic Senate work? I'll look into that on the Wikipedia later. Meanwhile, Obi-Wan has been promoted to Jedi Knight. And the Yoda, Wikipedia. And Yoda begrudgingly allows him to train Anakin in the ways of the Force, Anakin watches as they burn Qui-Gon's body, which is foreshadowing for Return of the Jedi, and Obi-Wan tells him he's going to train. He's like, I'm going to train you, little fucker. Yeah, you're going to be a Jedi. Mace Windu tells Yoda that Maul was definitely Sith, and Yoda says, always two there were, no more, no less, a master and an apprentice, and then he's like, well, which one was this one? Which one did we destroy, the master or the apprentice? And he's like, I don't know. I love that exchange. Yeah. I don't care how cheesy I, it is. I also yeah. like that. I don't moment. care how cheesy it is. It's such a cool world building thing. And then we see but that moment's great. And then we see a giant parade and everyone's getting <laughs> congratulated with. I love the parade. Well, I love the parade too until you I think, what, what am I going to do with this big fucking ball? Yeah. What, what, was the what, ball? what shelf is this ball going to fit on? Yeah. It's a key to the city. Yeah. Is, is that it? what it was? Do you eat it? What do you do with it? The Gungan City. We see it a big parade. Like Anakin Gungan's has a new ball character. of like energy. Anakin's now dressed as a Padawan, and he's got a really long braid. You think maybe it's just like a the thing they Hair clip extension. in. How Who long knows? is it? Uh, and Jar Jar can't get off a horse. The governor and the queen give the Gungan gave king. His. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, the, clip on yeah. the governor and the queen of Naboo give the, uh, the Gungan king a glowing orb uh, of peace, and Padme shoots young Anakin a smile. That's kind of creepy if you think about it. And the music here is what it is. That's yeah, the end. Awesome. No, the music's great. The music's great. Cool. But, it, but again, we go back a full You're circle. You're so wrong. This, like, it's definitively it's a, it's, wrong it's like a ba- It's like the ride at Disneyland that didn't have a line, so you're like, we'll just go on that. It's not. It's nah. so dope. Yeah. but It we, builds so well into the end. We go back full circle here of, why are the Jedis on stage? Why are they, like, sense. why are they fucking, no, it doesn't Mace make Windu's sense. Mace Windu's there. A Mace Windu. No, no, no. It does not make sense. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What the fuck? But it, it's not even just like Mace Windu and Yoda. It's like some other Yoda-looking motherfucker you know who's like... Yaddle? Yeah. And it's just like, why are all these fuckers here? It doesn't yeah. make any sense. Now, here's the thing. Imagine no, a different world, guys. Off. Imagine. Star I Wars Episode One. Yeah. I've got it in my head. <laughs> this just fucking starts going. The words come up. Obi-Wan Kenobi's master, Qui-Gon Jinn was killed at the hands of Darth Maul. Yeah. Blah, 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 this blah. This movie should have been an Obi-Wan movie. In his same. dying words, uh, his master asked him to lead Anakin when he wasn't even ready himself. Blah, 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 blah. Who, Whatever the fuck's happening. Start the movie. It's about Obi-Wan. It's about Obi-Wan trying to figure out, these Jedi don't seem like they have this shit together, yeah. but my master, who I do trust, is telling me to teach this little kid. Yeah. So much cooler. Yeah. And also, Anakin doesn't need to be a little kid. No. Make him 14. Yeah. yeah, there really wasn't. That's the thing. They're like, he's too old. And I'm like, but then we see the other Padwans, and they're like two years younger than this kid, right? Like, I get that you have to train a kid from birth. You identify him or whatever. But him being too, like, Luke was too old. They're like, he's 18. He's already a teenager. He's already set in his ways. That makes sense. Make him Luke's age. They're, again, another, oh, look, thematically, they're exactly like father, like son, right? Yeah. No, this is dumb. 
and make them the same age as, as Natalie Portman so that they can have a chemistry together. Mm, make her 18 too. Stuff. And she's like, man, this little fu- this kid that can fix shit, this grease monkey, he has got what it takes to fucking take off my geisha, geisha fucking clothes. It's just I wear. With, with Qui-Gon. I love him. I love the idea of him. But I would have loved the idea of him more if we never saw him. Never. And we just know that, that Obi-Wan's master Qui-Gon died. Cool. Qui-Gon's already dope. Yeah. Instead, we get this movie. <laughs> because the thing is, like, when we you talk about the analog, right, which is talking about Ben Kenobi and, and uh, Luke, right, at the beginning of A New Hope, that is the dynamic they were going for here. But Ben always had a sense of, like, we are we are gonna lose. Like I I don't have what it takes anymore. I'm 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 slow and I'm old and you are the new generation and you have to train no matter what. Like I'm gonna try to train you, but really Yoda's a better person to do this with. He he was already like ten steps behind when we started that. And then when he dies, you're like, oh shit, this is really scary because now Luke's out on his own. He's got to go find this other thing. Qui Gon just like does everything perfectly. Qui Gon does everything. Not only does he do it perfectly, he's Except the only one who does things. What would this movie? How would this movie be different? If Obi Wan just wasn't in it, it wouldn't. Also, it wouldn't have been different, realistically thinking, mm-hmm. if Anakin wasn't in it, because they already set up that as long as they have the Viceroy, they can make him stop the attack up there at the threat of gun. So Anakin doesn't have to be in this at all. Jar Jar doesn't have to be in this at all. Really, you you need Qui Gon and you need one one of the fucking new gun ray people. Yeah, you need. Yeah, but it. I think Obi Wan in this movie to Qui Gon was a lot like future spoilers what Anakin kind of becomes to Obi-Wan in the future where it, a decision is made and there's always somebody there being like I don't think this is wise sir and then being like yeah, no but, you're not fu- you're not paying attention to the force but that's that's Pay the thing like bro. the, the, the big problem I have with this is a lot of characters like don't have they don't seem to have agency over what's happening right they're just told to do stuff and they're like I guess I'll do it I don't know like no one takes the initiative except for Qui-Gon to do any to push the action for it at all and like it's just it's it just makes it so boring to watch. Yeah. They're just going from place to place, and someone's telling us what's happening. Hit me with that ragu, ragu. 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 What's up, everybody? My name is Andy Cortez, and this is Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys. I'm here joined by my host, everybody. I think is that how this works? Was it? Yeah, I thought I, every, so. I wasn't yeah. sure if that was Harry oh, Potter or not. But so far, yeah. the rankings of the bad guys in the Star Wars universe are number one, Bubble Tea. <laughs> What? I don't know what that. I think it was Boba Fett. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I maybe. Was it? Yeah, number Boba Fett two, and... Vader's choking hand, and number three, Tark Vader. Where do we put? Which one was just Boba Fett? Boba Fett was Empire. Oh, I think Empire. it was Boba Fett and uh, and, and, and Vader. Vader. No, Vader's choking hand was Empire. Yeah, Vader's choking hand was Empire. Yeah. Number one was. Bubble tea, Tark yeah. What? Yeah, that's got to be returned. But yeah. how does yeah. that connect to? Yeah. Well, Tarking Vader is 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 number hope. one. Yeah. Because Tarkin yeah. didn't make it past the hope. Exactly. So Boba yeah, must mean Emperor? Sure. Somehow? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Boba Emperor, maybe? I don't, I don't know. Boba Where team. do we put? Boba team. It's Palpatine and Boba Fett. Uh, that's what it was. That's what it was. Palpatine God, and Boba Fett. Which had to be Empire. No, that's no, uh, the last one. Jedi. Jedi. It's Jedi. Was, okay. Cool. Vader's choking hand is the, like, the reference to him killing so many Hell Jedi. Hell, yeah. In, uh, in two. In, yeah, in I remember Empire. writing like Four, Boba, Boba teen, but then it just became Bubble Tea. Fair point. Yeah. Okay. So where are we ranking? I guess we'll we'll say the trade the federation. Lord, no, because they don't do shit. <laughs> but they, they don't even do anything. They are the main the trade federation with their droids and um and, and mall and mall and, and mall and not city. New Gunnery was like took him away. <laughs> Terrible. Well, yeah, Sidious. Sidious is the Damn. one like making it all happen. Yeah, Sidious is the yeah, only drive, the only antagonist in this. Everyone, literally, the one if it weren't for it Sidious, all. the trade Federation would be like, we gotta. We yeah, gotta but like Sidious then would be the bad guy in all of the movies. Yeah, yeah. as know? Vader was. Too. As, no, but it's as different as though. Like was. this one explicitly has him giving orders for the people. You're right, to go and do they the say things. his name. Yeah, yeah. For the first time, I would say yeah. Sidious and Maul. Yeah, yeah. Sidious Maul. In Sidious Maul. Fucking low. I would put them at their plan and suck, the end, but wherever we're at four. But he does become rule, like whatever head of the. Fed- the thing the Congress, that the thing that whatever. sucks though is that like <laughs> I, I don't know I'm tired. You don't even care the, the thing the thing that sucks <laughs> is like Boba Fett is up there at number one with Palpatine. It was Nash. mostly Palpatine, it's right? Pretty cool though. But like Darth Maul, way cooler than Boba Fett. Yeah, way cool. Didn't last that much. Boba Fett just in, as long in two no, movies, much longer. Yeah, Maul one movie, barely. And now we have officially cooler. Maul still, in, yeah, like coolness. Yeah, but fair. it doesn't matter. It doesn't make you I know. A good. Coolness doesn't fucking matter. Doesn't does not make you. Well, good tell bad that guy. to the streets, dude. We have officially hit the uh, time mark for the movie itself. Hell yeah! Right. Sorry, hey. it's fun to lament on these. 
Is it? Uh, I'm I think put it they're last. Fourth. They're last. Yeah, right. dead last. And I'll, I'm gonna go also and take it take you to this next point. I think this movie's dead last. Dead last. And I would be surprised if it moves up the rankings. I'd be shocked. Yeah, oh. it's gonna be above Attack it's of the Clones. I above. promise. You. Is Attack of the Clones really that really? bad? Yes. I don't no, remember it being that bad. We'll, At least we'll we get, get the into fun, the like, conversation next people. week about the yeah yeah. The difference. We'll have a conversation right now. It's yeah. bad. <laughs> so is Real this bad. one though? Worse this than this bad, one? Though. Yes. No. I don't remember. No. I remember them getting slightly better, but I'll. We'll watch I, they next they week. get. I I've always thought they get better. Mm. Three does. Yes. Doesn't matter. All right. It doesn't. So matter. we're voting now. The yeah. Uh, do, uh, oh, haiku uh, review. Haiku Seven review. syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. Ka-ka, ka-ka, if you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Ka-ka, ka-ka, ka-ka. Haiku in review. Hello. Haiku in review. What's your haiku, buddy? Star Wars. F12. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny to write your review in haiku form, just like Suburb- Suburbanite Slob did. On a queen, he's macking. Races his pods like he's something. Size of a pumpkin. <laughs> 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 Great. Um, <laughs> Andrew Luttrell says, Shmi is Watto's baby. What are midichlorians? Not the worst movie. I agree, Andrew. Mm. But I'm going to say it. Probably the worst haiku I've ever fucking read on this show. Jesus, Tim. Come on. Hey. Wow. Hey. Why are you shit talking? I don't know. I just felt Andrew Latrell. You're time. pissed, right? Yeah. I, what I hey YouTubers out there, all you all you cool YouTubers, I want you to just take the clip from the last episode where we're like, let's try to go into this being positive yeah. and just cut to us us being yelling and just angry. <laughs> hey, I would argue we were as positive as we could be about this. I yeah. agree. Uh, I and positive. I'm not saying that in anyway, but I thought that we were overall. I, I was so positive I rewrote some of the scenes. Those are really good it. rewrites, Nick. Uh, Jacek says, a useless story. Should have been a short flashback. Save me all the grief. Yeah, but no mall. Uh, yes, you can't shop, mall, mall you can't really shop cool. at the mall, man. That's the thing. Extend mall. Like, don't have yeah. him die. Don't kill one. him in the yeah. first one. Yeah, it's yeah. dumb. Obi-Wan well, hates we mall. Well, we got to make it Yeah. Do we? Are you a Do we? Jeremy Z says, Watto disgracing the Jedi mall was chasing. This is pod racing. Fuck yeah. See, Andrew. You don't have to rhyme, but it Andrew, helps. that's how you do a... Haikus don't need to rhyme, but you did it. I love that Tim's like, the, if, if it doesn't rhyme, it's shit. That's <laughs> my favorite. Because um, he, he's thinking more of a rap term. See, Tim is a hip hopper. Brian S. says, Padme is 14. Anakin's just a slave. Kids love taxation. <laughs> uh, I'd be like, George, you're going to really start the whole thing off yeah, with a tax a tax This dispute? blockhead is perfectly legal. So now it's time to rank the Star Wars universe. Andy, good job with this image. Thanks, oh, very good great, job Barrett. with that with transition. Good job, Whoa. Uh, currently, number one, The Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, Return of the Jedi. Can we put this at number 11 and just see if it moves up the right? Yeah, thing? we've done that before. Yeah. There's president for it. Yeah, I. Uh, at, at the end of the day, all of the problems that we have, I think that the, uh, the most important one for this movie is that, at least for me, They don't make you emotionally invested in any of these characters whatsoever throughout the entire thing. I don't even feel for Obi-Wan, which is a character that we've known in other movies. I don't care for him until Qui-Gon dies. Where I'm like, oh, that's sad because, like, that's his. And even the, like, Duel of the Fates is cool because it's greatly choreographed. It's this, like, really epic scene that's made by the music. But even before then, when Qui-Gon's alive and they're all doing it, it's like, I'm still not emotionally invested in what is happening right Mm -hmm. now. And that is, like, when Qui-Gon dies, that's the best example of having, like, an emotional connection. And then the rest, there's the rest of the movie. Yep. And that's just why, at the end of the day, no matter how much our opinions differ on later movies, like, this is the worst one. Like I, By uh, yeah. far. By it's far. making a lot of sense. No, and, I don't agree and, and at all. And two, 2 does the best it can with terrible acting and what this story set up. Absolutely. Also, you're forgetting about, too, he grows a beard. And it's cool. You and McGregor in yet. second movie... Is actually fun to watch. He's we'll see you next cool. week, guys. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Uh, but for now, I, I think we actually have four. A, a pretty interesting vote. Yeah. Um, that might we might actually be a little divided here because obviously we all put it under Return of the Jedi. Oh, I thought you were going to try to put it above Return of the Jedi. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> no, Jesus no one would no. fucking would quit, do that. No way. Yeah. But what I'm going to propose here you. is who thinks it's better than number 11? <laughs> Raise your hands. <laughs> Wait, what? Oh, you want to? Okay, I see what you're saying. You number 11 or 4? For sake of the the, I'm, I'm confused on what we're saying here. Do you want it at number eleven or number four? Kevin? Eleven. Are we voting for eleven right now? We can put no. it at four. We can put it at four and just see where it bumps. Oh, down. I think that it should go at a number. It's 11. at number four now because you, you go. got outvoted, Kevin. So Damn it. I yeah. also I voted with you. So that's yeah. two yeah. people. Voted I'll tell you what. For the first 11, time in my life, three of us I sympathize with those people in the Senate because I don't know what the fuck we're voting on or what's happening right yeah. now. Yeah. 
So I get it's only it. with listen. They're like, guys. Wait, no, I, the, I was, I was confused. He's the Sith guy. We voted him in. What? Yeah, that guy's, oh no. <laughs> number <laughs> one, Empire Strikes Back. Number two, A New Hope. Number three, Return of the Jedi. Number four, The Phantom Menace. Next week, we are doing Attack of the Clones and Terminator. Dark Terminator Fate. Two is going to be later this week, and then Terminator Dark Fate next week. Get hyped. Until then. Now this is podcasting. So